Your blog page is 1.4 million views. Yeah. His tagline is every gamer's dream comes true <laughs> in this fantastical <laughs> tale of epic proportions. Oh, if you're a gamer or what? game lover, you've always dreamed of jumping into the world of your favorite game Stop. and experiencing everything. No. <laughs> Welcome back, delicious daddies, to another episode of Trash Taste. Right. I'm Joey, and I'm with two uh, more delicious kink you daddies. You want to talk about Joey? No, I'm with two more delicious daddies, Garton Connor, and uh, get your beers out, boys, because we're drinking. Hey, cheers, lads! Cheers! cheers. What are yeah. we doing today? What we have doing? to we have to do these every yeah. now and then because people keep asking. Well, for it's them. a Friday so today, and uh, we thought that it would be oh. a good way to start our weekend. Uh huh by just getting shit face drunk, or maybe not. Great, maybe not Joey. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm all right this time. I drank my Ukon, so I drank the magic potion, so I'll be all right. I've, all right. I've drank only non-alcoholic beer for like the past two weeks. So when I drank that, I was like, oh shit. Oh, this, this, is, this is what a real beer tastes like. This is what a real beer tastes like. How does it feel? You're, you're a man again. I actually kind of think of the non-alcoholic growing on me quite oh, a lot. God, I think I'm preferring it now. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. It's, it's, it's good How for a old casual are you still? one. It's good for a casual mm -hmm. one. How old are you still? I'm 27. Mate. <laughs> what, I can't have a non-alcoholic beer? <laughs> no, you're fine. The Australian it's, in yeah. me is offended. What, it's good. See, Garn has come over since the last time. You know, yeah, but you're he's gonna, old. You're gonna come over. Oh. What, wait, 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 what, what has that got to do with anything, what is, Yeah, yeah, what wait, is being older? Wait, what, what is, what is, what is, what is ageism got to do with I can't wait till you get a 30, Joey. Yeah, I'm gonna me, play the yeah. old Uno reverse Give card me eight months and I'll be there, don't worry. See, I haven't got to the age yet that I enjoy whiskey for the taste. I can taste the difference, uh -huh. but do I ever go out of my way to be like, I need a nice, like, I need a nice whiskey and uh, it does, over the rocks. Shit, I'm it already does, there. <laughs> when, you're, when you're not into like whiskey or you're not into wine, yeah. it, it feels like a conspiracy when everyone else is talking about the differences in the flavors. Yeah. You're yeah. like, you're all fucking with me. No, yeah, no, cause like, difference. cause I remember- It's like paint thinner to me. Yeah, no, cause I remember like, I only, <laughs> got, I I only got into whiskey or I started to like, I guess, get whiskey, quote unquote, uh, yeah. maybe like a few years ago. Yeah. Cause uh -huh. before then I was like, mm. nah, this tastes like paint thinner. This is yeah. horrendous. Yeah. And now that I'm into it, I finally, I'm not quite at the level of like, I can discern the difference between the different whiskeys, but mm. I do kind of understand when whiskey heads are just like, yes, this gives a, a smoky flavor. Or I, like I, a I can smell the smoke. Aroma. Cause it's like, yeah, if I, yeah. If I can put smoke but on before, like a couple of years ago when I was into it, I'm just like, nah, it all just smells terrible mm. to me. Like, I don't, I don't know the difference, but now I get it. I'm gonna be real. I think that way about wine. <laughs> I just, the more I've become a wine connoisseur, yeah. I guess, which is uh, a fancy way to say alcoholic. Um, <laughs> the more, the, the more I've gotten to like drinking different wines, yeah. I'm like, okay, wines come in two categories. Mm. Wine I like and wine I don't like. Oh, I thought you were gonna say red and white. <laughs> Oh, so, shit. Yeah. Oh, well, I feel like this is why I'm probably a bad <laughs> wine enjoyer is that I just generally enjoy every wine I've had, except for like very, very cheap, like no. five dollar wine. Yeah, I, I know I the know, wines. We've had, we've had some nights on cheap, cheap wine and you were enjoying it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It depends on drunk we are. Well, yeah. First of all, first of all, everyone knows, everybody knows, at least anyone who drinks fairly often, mm. the first drink is when you bring out the expensive stuff. Yes, yeah, every drink course. after that, just you can get yeah, cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Get cheaper you just yeah. buy the shittest stuff. Cause yeah. you're like, I don't give a fuck now. I've already had my, my one enjoyable drink. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's like craft beer as well. It's like the first craft beer is delicious. The f fifth one is is n just no different. What, um, do, what do you think then is the one type of alcohol that no matter how old you get, no matter how much you, you, your taste change in life, you don't mm. think you'll ever come around to? I, so, I just can't see a world where I like whiskey. I can't do tequila. I do. Or tequila. Yeah, tequila. Really? Yeah. I, I, every time every time I've had it, uh, I it just tastes like paint thinner. I really like Baiju. What is what? what is this then? What it's the this? Chinese one. It's the Chinese ah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. That sounds it's, scary. It is scary. It is scary because <laughs> you know it's like a stupidly high alcohol level. Yeah, no, also sake. I've 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 nah, tried to see, get to, into it. Sake for me so is like whiskey. I used to not like it, and now I actually can. I, I've gone one step beyond with sake. Yeah. I can now taste the difference. Oh, Chris gave me this uh, yogurt sake one time. It was literally just a yogurt drink right. that had sake in it, uh -huh. and it was really good. But I imagine if you drank too much, you'd easily throw up. Um, yeah, I mean, you can say that about anything. Well, milk, milk plus alcohol feels like uh, yeah, a deadly yeah. combo. That feels like a combo asking for suffering. Yeah, but you yeah. can say that about like if you drink like too much water, you can throw up. Well, I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I, you have to admit that it's easier to throw up on yogurt than well, it is. Yeah, to, uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can like curdle and stuff. Yeah, God, I've seen, I've seen this guy that's being like recommended on my YouTube shorts recently. And mm -hmm. his entire channel is based around going to a bar uh -huh. and ordering the most expensive drink there. Okay. And then 
just making a cocktail out of that drink. Like <laughs> it's like every time he goes up to the bar, yeah. he's like, "How much this? How much is a shot this is of this cost?" And people are like, "Oh, this is like two hundred dollars a shot or something." God damn! And he's like, "Can I have that in a cocktail?" And I'm waiting for the one time there is going to be a like a bar manager that says. Fuck off. <laughs> well, I mean, they probably have, but you pretty much didn't upload yeah, it. probably just caught them, yeah. Um, I yeah. When I was in Vegas, I went to this uh, this party and it was on some rooftop of a casino and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And um, it was an open bar. So naturally, when you hear it's an open bar, you yeah. want to order the most expensive thing on sure. the menu because you're just like, I want to see. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted the, they had a beer that mm. costed $30. Like a, yeah. like just a like, beer. Like, I was like- Like a regular pint of beer. Just a normal beer, it right. cost $30. Okay. And everything else was like 10, 15. Yeah. Yeah. It's America, it's expensive. Um, I was like, well, I want to see what the $30 beer is. Yeah. And they, they pull it out and it's like this tiny little beer, okay. like this glass, kind of like a grenade. Not stuff. even a pint? No, it's like 250, 300 mils. What the fuck? And it's 14%. That's um, a wine. That's a wine. It's basically a wine. That's yeah. a wine. Yeah. Well, actually, because when I went to when I went to Rotterdam and I I tried wild beer, it yeah. was just wine. Yeah. Um, because I guess the way they ferment can be uh, similar. I'm not sure, but anyway, yeah. tried this beer and, he was, and I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, why is it so fucking expensive? He's like, oh, it's uh, from uh, Belgium and it's uh, the highest grade of beer. And I was like, okay, no, 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 no. Beer is not beer. Is this every every person's drink? Yeah. This is not a, a thing that is yeah. meant to be turned into like a Louis Vuitton. Yeah, like yeah, there, like yeah. there is great beer, but beer should never be more than like $10 a pint. Sure. I mean, okay, I mean, you know, obviously inflation and whatnot, but generally right. it's the, it's the staple alcohol. Mm -hmm. And that's when I just realized, man, every time I go to America, I find out some new thing that's super expensive and I've never heard about because, because people just want to feel like they're buying the best of the best thing ever. But like legitimately though, I always- Oh, it's that blue one. It looks, it looks like that blue label on the- Oh, the very left? It looks very similar to that, but like small. Um, whatever that was. It looks kind of like that. She may. I, I don't know if it was that brand, but it was very small and it was uh -huh. a blue label. Uh -huh. Maybe the view is in the- I mean, you can get a, you can get a full pack <laughs> I don't, for- I don't think it's that one. You can get a well, full pack yeah. for $28. But I mean, I was in Vegas, so there's a high chance this could be just a $10 beer oh, that that's mar true. where they've marked yeah, it up. Yeah, but that's to... that's the thing, right? Is that like, when I whenever I see all of these like super expensive, like whiskeys or wines or anything like that, like <laughs> I legitimately wonder, okay, does that price just come purely from like the fact that they're using like the best grapes or the best, ingredients or whatever it yeah. is, or is it just marketing? Uh, marketing, generally marketing. It's gotta be, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's- Well, you, you know, like uh, the founder of like, um, uh, well, at least the, one of the co-founders or co-owners of, uh, uh, I don't know what the, the chain is called, but basically the one who owns all the luxury brands like Rolex, Louis yeah. Vuitton, yeah. whatnot. Uh, it's like the second richest man on earth. Yeah. Like what overtook uh, Elon Musk at one point during the pandemic. Damn. Which just goes to show how much money is in these luxury goods things. If it can make this one guy, the richest man on earth. Yeah. Because there's just, there's just way too much profit because these brands, they cost barely fucking anything. Yeah, that's true. Like the, the have you seen those YouTube channels where they tear apart like uh, the, coach the, or- The big like fucking bags of coach. He just tears them apart. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, uh, this is, he's like, this is uh, probably uh, $30. I know the exact guy yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. <laughs> he literally just gets a coach bag, tears it apart, cuts yeah. it all up. And he's like, okay, this is good technique here. They've attached, uh, but it's, it's some <laughs> European dude. God damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time these bags that cost $2,000 mm -hmm. are literally yeah. like $40. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That includes like labor to yeah. build. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is an expensive item that is actually worth the money? And is there anything that is worth having a really big price tag on it? Because, you know, I, I feel like some, you know, some people can make the same argument maybe for technology as well. Cause you know, you- I don't you know, see I was gonna say technology to the answer to your question, because yeah. I feel for the most part, like, you know, the the where it gets expensive is when you start to kind of go overboard with how much it's actually capable of. Whereas if you buy the stuff that just does what it's supposed to be, you know, what's supposed to do, for example, yeah. then I think in this day and age, it is pretty affordable for what it can do, right? Like a graphics card, for instance, is not that expensive unless you go like the well, really well, fucking- well, No, no, well, I'm, no, but yeah, I'm talking you, you like- cheap yeah, 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 I'm talking like the really ones. like fucking overkill ones, right? Yeah. Where it's like, no, like it's cool to have, but it's not like necessary to play the majority of games, right? Yeah, for streaming it is kind of- Well, for streaming, yeah. sure, you yeah. know, but that's, but you know, yeah. for a lot of people, that's like their job or their hobby, right? So they're willing to spend it on that. But, but even if, more so on like stuff like camera equipment, you know, yeah. which is an entire range of, hey, do you want to just take a, photo yeah. or video on your phone versus buying 15 grand cameras. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah, even then it's like that 15 grand is only a solid investment if 
you know what you're doing. But exactly. a lot of these camera companies now, they you know they advertise saying, "Hey, dude, this will make you you're a great photographer." Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But they, I mean, the they, they're getting really advanced. What's a good thing that's worth the money? Is there something that I've spent money on where I really feel like every dollar was worth it? A house. <laughs> oh, that's well, probably one of the. It goes to yeah. that level, you know, when we yeah. think about stuff like that, right? Honestly, like. like uh, I got a really, we got all very nice desks and I feel like they were very worth oh, yeah. the money. The standing were, desks. Yeah. It sounds so stupid, but like a fucking nice desk feels so fucking good. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, stuff like that where I'm like, just little things and I'm like, my coffee machine. Actually, there we go. Uh, <laughs> worth every fucking dollar, dude. Worth every fucking dollar. That oh. two grand that I spent on that thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I've already saved two grand on the coffee I would have bought. Uh, yeah, true, true. I still haven't bought beans for it because people keep buying me beans for my birthday yeah, or whatnot. So right. I've, I've still never bought my own beans. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you're saving all the yeah. fucking money. <laughs> yeah, dude. So I'm like, and I, I, I had this, this big brain idea. I was like, man, I hate, I hate having coffee outside of my house now. Yeah. I was like, I hate buying a coffee because I right. feel that like I have this machine that's great and yeah. I like the taste of it and I can make it the way I want. So I, I was like, oh, I should just fucking get a bunch of to-go cups. Right. So I just, if I'm leaving the house now, I'll just make a coffee in the morning, put it in the to-go cup and yeah. just take it with me. A good office chair. I, I got a new office yeah. chair recently, which was not like a gaming chair. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm just got, got into that age, but it has been- I want like, to get rid of my gaming chair as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a proper like ergonomic chair. Yeah, like a proper yeah. ergonomic office chair. True, true. It was pretty damn expensive. Definitely more expensive than- Yeah, what's like, that? What's Herman that? Miller's the one Herman thing. Miller's one. It's, it's yeah. a Herman okay. Miller one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And literally sitting on that, it, you know, immediately you notice the difference in comfort, but it's definitely after you are sitting there for like, eight to 10 hours during like a big grind session mm. at work, you're like, damn, okay, this is making a massive difference. And I can yeah. only imagine how much that extrapolates over time. I'm, I'm definitely debating to get rid of my gaming chair. Uh, and, <laughs> and swap it with like an ergonomic one because it's like, at first it was cool, you know, when like, cause when, I think when we all got one, it, it yeah. was kind of at the peak of like, everyone was getting yeah. these like, yeah. you know, big gaming chairs. But like, I don't know, nowadays I sit on the thing and I'm just like, I don't know, man. It's just I not mean, as comfortable in long, you know, long periods of time. I, I yeah. really, yeah, I think, I think I really like mine, but I think that when I'm sitting in it for like 12 hours, sometimes I think yeah. it's just too much. Also, it's a yeah. pain in the ass to clean. I've, I've never cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real gamer right there. I, you have to clean chairs? No, um, Wait, you clean your chairs? Uh, yeah, I do. I've never cleaned a chair. I've never chair. cleaned my chair either. Chair my well, because like, oh. because the, my gaming chair has like the- Do you the, the, off in it? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, but- That's, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> that was the biggest lie told on track. He's shaking off it. That's why he's cleaning it. Yeah. It's not my number one position. Oh, but okay. It's number two. But like, you, you know how the gaming chair has like, you know, it obviously has like the neck pillow and then also yeah. has like the, 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 the west, well, waist pillow. If you look behind those, like the, it collects like a lot of dust and oh, just shit. gunk and oh, shit. So shit. you should probably check it out. Do you, do you have- oh, go okay. for it. Do you have the butt indent in your chair? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to, the only reason I really want to get a desk chair, a different one is because I actually don't want one that goes all the way up. I kind of want one that's cut off of my shoulders. Oh, uh, like, like these ones. Yeah, because yeah. uh, when I was using a green screen, it was really fucking annoying. Yeah. And I actually, I just think it looks Why? nicer. Well, because the- Because it's in the shot. It's in the shot. Oh, it's cut okay. Off and the green screen's like, yeah. Here, and right. Also, they take up so much goddamn space. Yeah, so I, I actually, I had an, a, a, an old one, mm. uh, similar size to the mm. ones that we have upstairs. Uh, yeah. And uh, she's huge, huge. It was literally the biggest gaming chair available. And then my mom called me up and she was like, can we can we get rid of it? Because it's still in the UK. <laughs> right. And I was like, yeah. She was like, yeah, it's just in the way. And it's like, mom, it's okay. It's fine. Get rid of, get rid of <laughs> it's it. fine. So she's getting rid of that. I don't know if she'll get money for it. We'll find out. How yeah. much do you think posture actually matters? Like I know as an Asian parent, posture was drilled into me as a kid, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> as someone with bad posture, I think it's quite important. In the long run, it's definitely po it's definitely important. Yeah, I think it's very, very you important. You don't want to end up like those Japanese people, the old people you see in the station every now and then oh they're walking at like 90 mm. degrees, you know? Oh God, yeah. yeah. The posture is very important. Well, there's so many weird trends that are like, say, being, like you know, being like spread around <laughs> now. Like I, how the fuck did mewing start? Oh my you, God. You know, you know mewing? I don't know what that is. <laughs> the hell? I just think of the Pokemon. What's what's mewing? Is that the way you like? Uh, it's just with your mouth, right? No. Yeah, the... it's it's you have like I think it's you have certain exercises you can do with your mouth and tongue that make your jawline more defined. Yeah, this is proved to not be uh, effective, by the way. I this is yeah, to I, like, this totally, totally like, does not what? surprise me at all. So basically, you People just want a more defined jaw. Yeah, you want a okay. giga chad chin, basically. Sure. And uh, so there, there was this trend that's being spread around where if you do certain exercises with your like your tongue, if you like 
permanently like have your tongue like up on like the roof of your mouth, then you can train your jawline to be more defined, I guess. Oh. I never probably got into it, but I just saw a few videos about it. I'm like, why is this every, getting- Every viewer subconsciously is doing it. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone's just- <laughs> Well, that is actually like a trick that I learned uh, when I was doing like modeling stuff is that like to make the jawline seem really nice, you uh -huh. kind of- stop yourself in like a mid swallow or like, or put the, put right. your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And that way, when you do that, naturally this bottom part goes yeah. up. And so your jawline looks more defined just for that split second. Is your tongue not normally on the roof of your mouth? No. No. Oh, mine is. What? Really? Yeah, I normally rest it at the top. That's not resting. That's resting to me. <laughs> How is that resting? You are- Yeah, like, cause when you were talking about the whole time, I, I, I was like, I think my, before so you, you mentioned- So you are it, just a natural Miwa. I guess I've been here, but my, my jawline- That's why his isn't. jawline is impeccable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shit. Well, no, the, the, British, actually the British accent, the tongue is always at the top. When you think about it, right? Americans, right? When you do an American accent, you bring the tongue down, make it flatter. Right. So the American- American. Wait, is your whole tongue like flat on the roof of your mouth or is it just the your like tip of your tongue? Mostly the tip. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the same with me. When you're resting, right? Yeah, like it's like yeah, behind it's my touching. top gong. Yeah. Yeah, but I've I think, never really thought about it. But if you speak now. with an American accent, normally you're, because if you ever try to do American accent, mm. the best way to do it is to, is to bring your tongue back, mm. flatten it and like make it wide. Oh, I guess it is. And then if you were, to do, a, if you were to do a <laughs> British accent or I guess Australia and you, you put it upwards and you like your tongue kind of like goes like this. Whereas right, American right. one is like flat, British one goes up. Well, that's yeah. what like, you know, like linguistics experts yeah. like- British is uh, just expert viewers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess so. Every British person has an impeccable- Yeah, yeah this, shit, this shit is fucking dumb shit. I think it's and like- And I've no, seen British people, so I know this is a- Bullshit, yeah. uh, This is bullshit mm. theory now. <laughs> Um, yeah, don't. There's be a British. ton of people who look like the very left guy on the second row there. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I feel I feel sorry for people who are like don't have pronounced chins in a sense because they're just like everyone on TikTok and whatnot is just being like, yeah, how to fix this? How to fix yeah. you? Yeah, you know, if I have brown eyes there's, or blue eyes, there's no how to fix that. Yeah. You know I, mean? <laughs> I think I'd be, I think I'd be a bit, I'd be a bit pissed off. Yeah, that is kind of annoying because um, I've never looked at someone who has a face like that and thought like, oh. <laughs> Your face needs a fix up. Like I don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I literally never had that thought until TikTok started putting it in my head that I should I should think about this. Yeah, and then I see people with it, and now I'm like, why the fuck is TikTok? Making <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you look at you look at you meet someone like that, and they're like, oh, you didn't. Like, do I, it, I feel huh? like yeah. this is how we train people to be like racist in a way. <laughs> we just like keep keep exposing them to this idea mm -hmm. that this is bad, and they'll yeah. eventually learn it. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad. Who cares? Hate if you don't have a chin. Hate hate them. Think, yeah. that they, think that they look <laughs> they're weak. They're terrible human think beings. They look awful. Tell them the weird. Like, what the fuck? What is this? Well, it's it's kind of like all like the different rabbit holes you can mm. you can go down because mm. I didn't ha I had no idea a lot of these things existed, and now the idea is just planted in my head. Yeah, right. Me too. And you know, I, I feel this a lot sometimes where there is this thing that's you know that is you know as a bad thing that I never really thought about, mm. and now I'm thinking, well, I never really thought about it. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm scared that I would. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm scared about this idea. I had no yeah. idea this could be even seen as a negative trait. Yeah. And now I'm thinking about it. Is, and now, is everyone thinking about it? Is yeah, thinking about exactly, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, what if I'm doing it without being intentional? You know, what, what if I do this into unintentional bad thing? And shit, I'm like, now I'm thinking about it. What if I'm just a bad person? <laughs> 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 nah, man, you can't you can't let that shit stop you from being you. Okay. Unless you are actually a bad person, then you should probably stop. <laughs> okay, but uh, we were meant to be playing some drinking games today. Okay, seems appropriate. Yeah, right, since we, uh, we are drinking right now. <laughs> okay, <what's>, really? <laughs> did you plan a bunch of games? No, I just uh, I just thought we could play a drinking game, a simple drinking game, uh, okay. truth or drink. Okay, okay. Um, easy enough. So we know each other pretty well. So I'm wondering how well we can- Wait, wait, so to, to, to re-clarify the rules, right? It's someone asks someone a question. Yeah, could you give me an example? Okay, actually, let's, 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 let's try an example right now. Okay. And I guess we could do it for all of us. I guess we just say the truth or we drink. Okay. Um, so let's- <laughs> I feel though, I don't know how well this is gonna work with Trash Days because we've already said a lot yeah, that's, of that's, that's personal why. shit the first, the sober. First, the first question I got asked is who would you bring to you with you on a desert island? And I'm like, we, we've already had a desert island question. Uh, yeah. Okay. What is the pettiest thing you've ever done? The pettiest thing I've yeah. ever done? Have we ever done anything petty? Have I ever done I've anything? I've definitely got something petty. I, I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Whoa, okay. Whoa, we're coming at me now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> out of out of out of all of us, 
I feel like you would have done something petty. I'm trying to think if I've ever done anything petty. I don't know if I've, because like, I, I don't know. Maybe because like, it's hard because to me, it might not seem petty, but to someone else, it might be petty, right? So it's it's like, to, to me, it might just be like, oh yeah, I just like did that normal thing because I just thought it was normal. Uh, What have I done that's petty? Can, can you ever think of anything petty, like just casually that you've done? Casually? I, I don't know because- Oh, okay. I, I, I know one and okay. I'm, I'm not going to drink. I can tell the truth of this, right. but the pettiest thing I've probably ever done. And I'm, and I know a lot of people are going to find this petty, but like one of my biggest pet peeves, right? I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of pet peeves, but one of my biggest pet peeves ever since I was in high school was when someone is wearing the shirt of a band that they have no idea who they are. <laughs> This is the this, most Joey thing. Ever. This is already pretty petty. Joey. Like, like there was a there was a moment I I remember in like the early 2010s especially when like Hot yeah. Topic had this thing where like you know they were selling a bunch of like different band T-shirts of like mm. classic bands or like you know uh, like bands we grew up with and stuff like that. And one shirt I kept seeing all the goddamn time was like shirts that just had like a big face of Kurt Cobain on it. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, all right, yeah, you know, they were a really, you know, famous band, loved band. That's cool. I love them too. It's whatever. Yeah. But then it gets really annoying. <laughs> I remember there was this one time where a, a, a friend of mine was wearing, like we went out to this party and a friend of mine uh, a, who was a girl was wearing this Kurt Cobain shirt. And it was really surprising to me because I didn't expect her to be like a fan of like Nirvana or like mm, listen yeah. to or Kurt Cobain stuff. So naturally, you know, as like a, an icebreaker type thing, I went up to her and I was like, oh shit, nice shirt. And she was like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, oh, what do you like Nirvana? What's your favorite song? Mm. And she and she dead ass looked at me and went, what's Nirvana? <laughs> Guess what did you do? So I just walked away. <laughs> I just, I, I, and then, and then I just, I just was bitching to my friends being like, why, why would you, because if you're wearing a shirt like that to a fan, that is an invitation for you to like connect with that, what, with, with what you think is like a common, you know, like yeah. for, for something, right? But the fact that you're wearing this shirt and you don't even know who Nirvana is, let alone who Kurt Cobain is. I just feel like if you're gonna put someone's face on your body, you should at least know who's. Yeah, face is. exactly. Like, and and it's like you know, it, and if that like particular band or artist or whatever is someone who like you know maybe a lot of people don't like, like I don't know, if someone was wearing like a fucking Imagine Dragons shirt, mm. I wouldn't give a shit because that's no. what they like. But like, don't don't fool me <laughs> into thinking that you like the same thing that I do and yet you don't. <laughs> So mm -hmm. I, so mm. whenever I, so that's, I would say to, for some people is like petty, I would yeah. say. And that's probably the pettiest things I've done. That's the, that's the uh, hipster musician. In yeah, you as, as the hipster musician nerd in me, I can't forgive that. So don't fucking do that. <laughs> Cause I will call you out if you do shit like that. Have you, have, have you ever had any petty moments? I've had so many, but I'm trying to think of the petty. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the one that you were thinking of? Huh? I literally can't think of anything. No, no, and for Connor, I mean. For Connor, I don't know. You Connor, said you said he seems like well, a lot of the done. times. If someone Connor's a gamer, if yeah, so. if, someone, <laughs> if, if someone just says something and it pisses me off, or they're wrong, or they like try to like if so, I, I in the past I've definitely done this where someone's like lauded over that they know more about something than me or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or, the, or they you know ex opinion this. Uh, I'll just I'll just if if like they think that there's like a few occasions where someone is saying like oh you don't know uh this game is better than this one. And so I'll just play the entire game just to like hours or whatever. Or if someone tells me that like X game is harder. Yeah. I think in the past I've, again, I think Halo. Uh, I wish is that why you decided to play Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that was pure pettiness. Uh, so I could accurately talk shit. Right. You know, uh, same same reason I toured the entirety of America with you guys. Oh, uh, that's true. So I could shut Americans I up. I guess in a sense, that was the pettiest um, thing we've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was a pretty petty thing. Like if someone tells me that like that game is hard and they're like insistent on it and I'm like, I don't think it is. I, I will just play that game and learn it and get a higher rank than them yeah. just out of spite. Just to be like, well, that's so that hard. true, actually, because just now out of like, just shut up. So you're bad at this game. You're bad at the thing you like. I'm better, and I know more than you. Shut up. <laughs> that's petty. Because <laughs> every time I go back to Wisconsin now and just have like a drink with a bunch of you know Sydney's friends or people around there, and mm -hmm. they start talking about America, I'm like, oh, you know about America? All right, tell mm -hmm. me. Yeah, <laughs> tell me. Name the I'll states. Show, you've I'll been show to. you what the real opinion of America <laughs> is. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna take a drink because I can't think of anything too petty. Oh, there was one thing I did do. This guy, um, this guy, <laughs> I don't know if it's petty. Right. This guy uh, 
this guy uh took stole my, my little brother gave his xbox account away i told you about this one time mm, I think. yeah he gave it to this hacker and i couldn't i couldn't uh do anything to like help him get it back so it's gone but uh he played a lot of cod yeah. and this is back in the day on cod where if you were in someone's lobby mm -hmm. you could join off of their account based right. off of recent players right, right. right so i spent like a week just going into <laughs> games and just finding him and killing him like nonstop for like a week to just piss him off in the hopes that he'd eventually give it back. It didn't work, but I'd like to imagine that I, I annoyed him. Yeah. But for like a week straight, for like a total of like 40 hours, I must've just been going in this guy's games, just following him and killing him. And then whenever he's trying to talk in the, in the lobby, I would tell people what he was trying to do. Is that petty or is that just toxic? <laughs> Well, he stole the account, so <laughs> he's a dick. So I feel like it doesn't count as pettiness because it was deserved. Right. But also very petty for me to waste all my time. I mean, it. yeah, that's true. But it was fun hearing the guy get angry. Yeah. I do enjoy doing that. <laughs> that was very fun. Oh, I, I have done something petty. I guess I guess it's pretty petty. Mm. Um, but I remember in like the first year of university, I was, so this was like at the end of first year, mm. right? And I didn't really try in the first year. Mm. And I, I'm that kind of guy who, this is gonna sound really fucking stupidly, you know, overconfident, but I just, I guess I figured out how to just score well on exams. I, I wouldn't say I'm smart, okay. but I, I always- I, th you I think knew I, how to game the system, I, I, you studied. I, I not necessarily studied, it's like, I, I kind of- <laughs> I'm just a genius. I can't, I, no, no, no. I min max the amount of effort I needed to do <laughs> to, put, to get a respectful grade without doing uh, yeah. as much effort. So most of the time that just meant revising the day before the exam. Yeah, right, for yeah right. most, it works. Sure, it works. For, for most exams. Yeah. And I remember I had a mate who, uh, who was one of those, uh, she, was, she was one of those girls who had to like study for weeks before an exam mm. and still, you know, kind of got a respectable, but like passing grade. Right. And I remember the first year, um, she, cause we, we took, we both took engineering courses and she was like studying weeks for this exam. Right. And I, and she kept asking me, Hey, are you, you going to study? Are you going to study? I'm like, no, nah, I think I'm, I think, I think I'm I good. Got it. <laughs> I think I'm good. I'm going to wait till the final day. Uh, I wait till the final day and study one day. I got a over 70% on that exam, which in English universities is like a first degree. Yeah, right? You yeah, need to get nice, over 70%. Yeah. And I remember, <laughs> I remember she got to two one, which is like a 60, 60 to 70%. To 70%. Right. And she started her ass off and she was like so pissed off at me. And she was like, bro, this is like the first year. You cannot fucking get away with this for all of your university years. So- And then I did. <laughs> so throughout, throughout the university years, at the, end of, at the end of every year, I would get above 70% and I'd be, I'd be like, GG easy. Oh like every God. year I'd send it to her. And the last year, uh, <laughs> the, the last year the when I did my master's degree, uh, I didn't study one day. I studied like two days before the final, final exam. Oh, and, what a hard work. <laughs> and I, I remember getting my result for that. I got 69.5%, which got rounded up yeah, to round a out. first so degree. <laughs> and the first person I sent it to was not my parents but it was to this friend because I still remember the one time she said that to me. And, uh, and that is probably the pettiest thing I've done. Yeah. Well, I mean, in universities where you get humbled and you realize yeah. you're not smart. Yeah. Cause you're like, oh, I'm in the fifth best university. That means there are five whole classes or yeah. years of people that are better than me. Yeah. The subject. Or I, I don't know, man, as someone who in, during <laughs> university was a lot like your friend yeah. where I would study my ass off and get like, okay grades. <laughs> I would have fucking hated you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this just way bastard. better at retaining information. I just, I just, I don't know what it is. I I'm the kind of person who like during class, like say for example, like during high school, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I perform really well in class, but I absolutely suck at exams. Like, I don't know why, like the moment I enter it, maybe it's the pressure of being in like an exam environment, but like the moment I sit down to do like an exam of whatever it is, everything I thought I knew just goes out the window. Mm. Yeah. That's and I'm like, and I'm like, I, I should know this. Like I answered these, fine in the classroom setting. Why is it that when suddenly it's a test, I just forget everything. Stage five. The one time that I'm supposed to perform well and I don't, and I always fucking flunk it. That's why I barely pass university. Damn. Uh, yeah. All right, what's the next question? All right, well, next. that wasn't a hard one. I think I drank five times in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. Uh, have you ever been arrested? No, right? No. 
No, well, you got deported. You got That's, deported. It's kind of arrested. Well, right. I didn't quite. get arrested. I have a criminal record. It's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not an arrest. All right. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Which one of these have not have we not answers? When was the last time you wanted to hit somebody? Every episode. Every episode. <laughs> 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 wanted to hit somebody. Oh, but I have no enemies, um, except <laughs> like, the time. Like when I was a kid, like never. <laughs> uh, not since I like had- When was, when, yeah, when was the last time you did then? Because I know you went through the whole fight club phase. Yeah, that was it. I haven't wanted to fight anyone since. Well, he got all those urges out. Yeah. I've wanted to watch someone get hit, but not me do it myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm good. I'm, yeah, I think I the only care. time I had that urge was when I actually did it. And that was to my school bully. Which is a justified reason. Which is yeah. a justified when reason. You, when after you think, that, when, you, when do you kind of think like you calmed down though, from your like right after <laughs> that? Like I felt like I felt zen. I felt peaceful about it. I, f I was ready to throw hands, but I was like, I'm good. He depleted his rage. <laughs> I love getting angry at stuff, but I don't. Uh, but not to the point to, where you get physical. No, no. I think yeah. I feel like that's a sign of weakness. I agree. Because yeah. you can't. What? What's? Why can't you just yeah. control Fight yourself? Fight with words. Yeah, you know? control yourself. Yeah, you know. But it's, I think it's like a, a weak and childish way of handling situations if you lash no, out. No, totally. Yeah. Uh, and if you are the kind of person that hits people or wants to hit people, I think that you should change. Go to a boxing gym. <laughs> yeah, dude, go, go do go do some contact sports. Uh, but even then, that's not really the philosophy they try to teach them. Yeah. It's not, get, not punch people. It's, hey, discipline, learn how to fight, be respectful. Yeah. I mean, contact sports are very, very respectful generally. Oh, so. totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where I, f I feel like you get to control your rage and your anger because yeah. I don't know. I, it's, it's weird for me because I'm, you know, generally a calm person, but sometimes, do you guys have like this, this kind of like mental block when it comes to just screaming? I know you don't. Screaming at your full, like full volume. Um, at people I do, but at the camera now. Yeah. Well, mm. like I, I would never want to scream at someone. Have you ever oh. done that? Uh, when I was younger, yeah. I haven't done it in a long time. Yeah, I think I think I'm one of those people where the angrier I get, the quieter I get. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, you know? like when I'm actually when I see people get like mega angry and they start like screaming and yelling, mm -hmm. I'm just like, how can you do that? Because I feel when I get like really really angry, yeah, I'm so frustrated inside my head that I don't I can't even muster up the energy to like talk at a normal volume. You know, I'm like, I'm almost whispering when yeah. I'm like really angry, <laughs> or, or I just don't talk at all. Yeah, you know, because I'm so like in this like cloud of like frustration. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really get the urge to like, the only time I get the urge to like scream and shout is when I get like really drunk or I'm at a karaoke. I've, I've, I've only like, <laughs> I've only like screamed a few times out of pure anger. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't like the feeling. It's- No. It's, <laughs> this, this is gonna sound so weird. It's, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like busting a nut, but you, you realize you just jacked off to the most decrepit shit of all time. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the few, because I, the few times that I have not been able to control, I think, I think it's the feeling of like, I have not been able to control mm, it. And yeah. I think it's only happened literally once in my life mm. and it happened once. And then I was like, I don't ever want that to happen yeah, again. Yeah. Cause I've just felt like I was just out of control of my own anger and yeah. that was, Something uh, about the mental imagery of like finishing jacking off to like the most decrepit shit and then standing up with your dick in your hand being like, no! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Can we get rid of this Mr. Bean ass looking dude? Yeah. <laughs> That's That's uh, pissing me off. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This episode is sponsored by Sakuroko. Have you ever thought, hey, I'd like to experience Japan, but from the comfort of my own home? Well, now you can, thanks to Sakuroko. Sakuroko is a monthly authentic Japanese snack box subscription box that supports local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisanal Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and special Japanese tableware. And every single one of these Sakuroko boxes is themed monthly. And given that it's spring, this one's a cherry blossom theme box. Inside there's Sakura Mochi, Sakura Biscuits, Sakura Doriaki, Sakura Donuts, Sakura Candy, and many more. Trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss out on the Sakura Mochi. And all of this pairs perfectly with their sweet Sakura tea. And this month's tableware item is a really cute Sakura-themed cat dish. And if you wanna know about the allergen information of the food, or you wanna just learn more about the culture, it comes with a book that explains all of that for you. So if you wanna experience a traditional Japanese hanami from the comfort of your own home, make sure you go to Sakura Co right now and get the special themed Sakura box for spring. So smash the link in the description down below to get your very own Sakura Co box. And if you use coupon code Trash Taste, you get $5 off your very first Sakura Co box. Back to the episode. All right, let's do the next one. Yeah. What is the weirdest thing you've ever said to a stranger? I don't know what the weirdest thing I've ever said, but hanging out with Sydney is just like an all you can eat buffet <laughs> about some of the weirdest shit you could ever say to a person. Such as? Oh, 
where do I start? <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, I need to hear some examples. I mean, I I, okay, okay. I know Sydney well enough where I kind of can guess <laughs> what she would okay, say, but okay. um, sometimes she says some things said. where. So it's this just is like, this is before I guess. Oh my god! I'm, I'm like, okay, this is before Sydney moved to, uh, before we moved to Japan. Yeah, right. And uh, so we're we're in Thailand, right? And so. Um, I, th I think we were about to move to Japan and Sydney was like, oh, I'm going to practice my Japanese as much as possible as, you know, we, we kind of try and do. Mm. And so we were in this bar, right? And we were pretty wasted at uh -huh. the time. And Sydney, when she's pretty wasted, lets her intrusive thoughts just take over every sure. single time. So uh, it was kind of a loud bar. And uh, we, we were sitting at this bar and this other couple sat next to us and you know sydney just looked at them and just said ah konnichiwa <laughs> which number one <laughs> num <laughs> what <laughs> number one uh number one it's just like that's that's a big assumption yeah and and uh the couple next to us uh just replied oh sorry we're not japanese <laughs> and then sydney out of embarrassment, did not know how to react. So she dabbed. She just, <laughs> she, just the fuck? she just went like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Sydney is just not a real person. Like what the fuck is that? And the couple looked at each other and then left. And like, then what, was, <laughs> what was she expecting the response to be after that? Like you just fucking dab. What, what were they gonna do? Like fucking. That is insane. <laughs> okay, I I, I I omitted a pretty important uh, piece of information. Uh, yeah. So it was it was in uh, a Izakia in like Thailand. Yeah, 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 That we were sitting next to. So there was I, I because mean, only uh, Japanese people. Yeah, go no, 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 exactly. <laughs> so there was a mental reason why she said that, I guess. But <laughs> that's but, like that is such a bold shot to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the 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 response to that emergency situation was very bold. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, I guess that's become a core memory of uh, life. Yeah, of, I think that would be a core yeah. memory for me yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what's up next then? Let's see. Uh, what's up next? No. What's the weirdest thought you've ever had sitting on the toilet? Oh, where the fuck do I start? I don't know. I feel like I get most of my weird thoughts and just weird takes just sitting on the toilet a lot of the time. remember any. Yeah, because you don't sit on the toilet for a long time at all. I wouldn't remember where I had a specific thought. Do you yeah. remember where you have thoughts? Not really. No, I don't remember either. Do you? Sometimes. Like rarely though, right? Do you ever note down your thoughts? Uh, No. I mean, only if I think it can turn into a video. Yeah, if I know that <laughs> it's important. And that's usually as I'm kind of drifting off to sleep, because that's when all the weird ideas come to my head. I write them down in my notes. I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning, look at the notes and go, these are all stupid. And I just delete all of them. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I've, <laughs> I was going to say this thing, like it's a, like a fucking groundbreaking things. Mm. Uh, but since Trash Taster started, I've been, I guess, noting down little things that have happened during my day. Mm. Sometimes if something interesting happens mm. to, during the day, and then I realize, oh wait, that's not a fucking groundbreaking thing. I'm just starting a diary, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a diary. yeah, it's a diary. I thought, yeah. but like, since I've been doing that, I've realized how many little interesting tidbits happened in my life that I've just completely forgot about. Mm. And I realized because I've been one of those guys that I just always forget to take pictures and I want to take more pictures like going forward in the future because mm. there are so many things that um that I want to remember as I, I'm like go I'm like as I'm like going forward and I always assume eh someone else is gonna take a picture of it. Yeah. It'll be fine. But then the more the life goes on, the more I realize I don't, I'm so shit at retaining information mm. and memories. Totally. Yeah, sometimes. Me totally. Like I don't remember half of the places we went to on the America tour. You know, I, don't, can, I, don't, can I don't remember half of last year. <laughs> right? Like legit. Right. I have either like perfect memory of a situation or no memory. There's no in between. Yeah. Well, well, I think that's where the whole like, you know, uh, stereotype of like boys nights versus girls nights like yeah. happens, right? Where it's like, you know, if your partner goes to a girls night, they come home and you ask them, oh, so what'd you guys talk about? And they can tell you everything and like the tiniest mm. information, like as if you were there. 
boy comes back from a boys night and the girl asks like, oh, what'd you guys talk about? And the guy goes, oh, I don't remember. All right, Jerry, last time, last time, the last night out that we missed was probably the Geeks Plus party. Okay. What are you guys talking about there? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you got all the boys at Geeks Plus, Joey. You, 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 had a, you had a night, you had a night with each other, Joey. What, what, what were you guys, what were you guys talking about? <sighs> What are we talking about? I mean, I mean, dudes, dudes will Kai, like- Kai, do you remember? Dudes will not see- Kai, Kai, do you know? I'm thinking. <laughs> guys, guys will not see each other for a year. Yeah. And then when they meet up, they won't talk about what's happening in life. They'll be like, yo, did you see the new fucking Magic the Gathering Yeah, 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 exactly. And they'll literally talk about We're that. We're so bad at telling other people what's been happening in our life. Like the, lit literally the only time I ever do that now is on Trash Taste. Yeah. Or like if I'm talking to Aki. But like well, other than that, like if I met up with like, you know, a, a guy friend from that I haven't seen in like, three, four, five years. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not gonna, I, I'll maybe, you know, just to get the conversation going, talk about like what I've been up to, yeah. but then it quickly devolves into like, yo, did you see this meme? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that the guys generally tend to lean towards wanting to share experiences as opposed to share uh, like- um, Sharing stories. Sharing stories or personal feelings on yeah. stuff, which yeah. is admittedly something that I think that more guys, you know, should incorporate. Sure. We should talk more about our feelings and whatnot, but mm. I think often guys just default to let's do something together, mm. be it drinking, Doing sports, just because that's just how guys generally are. Totally, but it's it's also like I've I've you know I've had some like deep talks with guys before. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it's it's so weird because it's not like I I remember how meaningful the deep talk was mm -hmm. and you know some of the things I say, but me trying to describe it. So sometimes I have this like deep meaningful talk with some of my guy friends, and I'll tell Sydney, oh yeah, I talked about this thing, and she'll be like, oh, what did you guys say? <laughs> and like in the moment, I'm like, um, I can give you um, the gist of it. I can't he tell you. was sad, <laughs> and I said things that made him better. <laughs> <laughs> We just resort to like two IQ yeah. when, when it comes to like talking about like the actual details and shit. We just yeah. know like how it started and how it ended. God, when you when you went home from school, right? Did your yeah. parents ask ask you, oh, what'd you do today? School. Oh, all the time. And cool. I was just like, or like, how was school? Yeah, how was school? That was always what, the what question. What did you say? Did you ever have a- did, No, it was always, was, okay. Was there one yeah, was time like, in your yeah, life that you actually said something meaningful in the- yeah, I did something exciting at school. I did, we did this, we did I'm sure that. I did. I'm sure I did, but do I remember any of it? No. Cause sometimes I have like, a, I have a talk, you know, it continues now to this day when I phone my parents and they're like, oh, have you been doing anything interesting? What have you been up to? We haven't talked for a while. And I'm like, I've been good. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've filmed like some fucking insane videos on trash taste. <laughs> we've like toured all over America. And they asked me, oh, was there anything interesting in hap that happened in America? Yeah. I could not tell them a single fucking thing. <laughs> I, I was like, did I, well, but is it on camera? The more the more you have those experiences, the more yeah. you kind of start labeling them as ordinary. Yeah, and exactly. And your brain kind of starts forgetting them. So exactly. it's something that would seem, that would previously have been kind of like huge life events kind of just become a drop in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is like true. I was going to film something in Australia like that. I'm sure yeah. that at one point in my life would have been an insane memory. I oh, for forget. sure, yeah. for sure. And now it's just another one to add to the list, yeah. which is sad, but also cool that you get to have so many cool experiences. Yeah, I think yeah. like it, it kind of, it, it's this weird like cash 22 of like the more of those kinds of experiences you have, the less like each one of those maybe individual experiences mm. maybe don't get ingrained into your mind as often as it should. Yeah. But at the same time, the greater your overall experience becomes oh, with yeah. just like everything you've done. But right? the first few I still remember very vividly. Which ones? The first few big experiences of previous traveling or I remember very clearly. What was, yeah. your, what was your first one? Um, I mean, alone, because I used to always travel a lot with my parents, but the first real big experience I had was I went to Anime Expo when I was like, um, 18 or 19, right. 19, I must be, yeah, 19 or 20. No, no, I, I could drink, so I was 21. No, mm -hmm. I lied. I remember I was 20. <laughs> yeah, I lied. Yeah, I, I bullshitted a lot. Yeah. Which is a crime, federal crime. <laughs> um, but no, I, I I was 20 when I went to AX the first time. Right. And um, yeah, I remember that was like the really, like, I remember a lot of stuff very vividly because it was like my first time ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, going to a foreign country alone, especially so far away. Mm. Cause I'd never been to, I'd only been to America once at that point. It was like when I was like 12. So it didn't right. Really, and it was with your family, right? Yeah, uh, no, it was a school trip. Oh, school trip. Yeah. It's yeah, very but, different. Yeah, but like sometimes we can have like a big event and I remember the most random thing from yeah, that true, event. That's true. not the big thing. Like, <laughs> you know, remember when we went to Hawaii and we did all that, you know, exciting things in Hawaii. I only remember riding the moped. <laughs> Do you know what I remember? I just, 
I, for some reason, the core memory from that trip yeah. is just watching Lord of the Rings with you boys in the, in the hotel room. Out of everything- Those are core memory. Out of everything that I did, that's I how was you just know, like- That's how you know that was quality boys time. I was like, out of everything we did, that was the one thing I remember. You cannot take away watching Lord of the Rings with the boys. That, that is, is a core memory. Lord of the Rings is a core memory in and of itself. Yeah. That was so, what a fucking great film. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was a, that was a good night though. Oh, I hung up with a mate recently and he just said the most like, he just said a line mm. that just like, I don't know, it just encapsulated the feeling where, you know, we we're having a fun time, we we're just vibing. And he was just like, oh man, this is fucking core memory shit right now. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck. You can't say that in the moment. <laughs> I don't like, know. You're like, that's like you almost putting it on you. Yeah, that's re- putting yeah. pressure. You're like, this is not a canon event. If you don't remember well, this, this not- I will be sad. No, no, no. As I don't know as, who you are. As soon as, no, no, it's, it, it works. Because as soon as he said that, I, I think about that moment all of the well, time. That's like saying, because- like, that's like if I, we hung out and I said, God, I love you. It's like, sincerely, you would remember that. Cause you'd be like, why did he say that? <laughs> like, wow! I want to go up to I want to I want to go up to a stranger on the street and just go. This is a real core cool memory moment right now. <laughs> See if they remember. No, I, I want to use that line more in my vocabulary now. If I'm just having a fucking great time, if I just say, "Oh man, this is fucking core cool cool memory shit. moment," Dude, <laughs> can't say that. That's, that's putting the you're putting the onus on the other person no, to fuck, have a core cool memory. Fuck off! I wish I said that at my wedding day. Me in front of the altar with Sydney. I'm, I just this stare, is a core cool memory. I, I, I stare, during your during your speech. Yeah. Like, I stand out and say, cool "Thank you for coming." Too. To my wedding, this is a real core cool memory moment yeah. right now. I like look Sydney in the eye. I'm like, Sydney, this is core cool memory shit right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil. Yeah. What is the earliest memories you guys have? We had. We spoke about this on Trash Taste. Have we? Yep. Yeah. I remember because I can. It was a core cool memory moment. You don't remember? <laughs> yeah. Wondering. I literally explained that I couldn't fucking remember anything from like before age twelve. The mine is, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've said this on po- on the podcast already, but mine was when I was five years old and I got lost in Osaka. Okay. Yeah, yeah. More yeah. specific question. Okay, uh, you gotta mix it up, Gone. Yeah. We're, we're using <laughs> this, this is gonna sound so weird, right? Um, do you have any core memories regarding <laughs> The Simpsons? Hell yeah. <laughs> because- Hell yeah. What, do do? what does that mean? <laughs> okay, because I was, I was, okay. So there's this like, there's one random scene, right? Cause I was hearing this piece of music and it was classical gas. Yeah. And I was just like, oh shit. I remember this song from the Simpsons. It was this random fucking episode. Right. And I was like, oh my God, I got to search this up because I, for some reason there was just this one very quick scene where Lisa plays the guitar and then Lenny goes, oh, can you play classical gas? And and that is I and and she starts playing classical gas yeah. and I was like I don't know why that memory sticks out to me so much but I searched it up and then I go to like the comments because apparently a lot of people remember this scene and one of like one of the top comments was like this scene is a core memory for me <laughs> and I'm like holy uh, shit what me the, too the only core memory I have with the Simpsons <laughs> was uh so so we had in, I, in my room uh we had basically my dad's like kind of hand me down like CRT TV. Right, yeah. that he obviously replaced when you know the the flat screen LEDs came out, but he held on to the CRT for the longest time, and I wanted to have it in my room so that I could watch like Simpsons and Futurama with my sister. Yeah. Um. So we would have this CRT in my room, and it was those like old CRTs where like it had the really really long like antennas, mm. and you, like literally it was so bad that one of us during an entire episode, we would take it in terms per episode to like hold the antenna in like the correct position to get the best reception. It's real ghetto shit. Uh, but I have a core cool memory for some reason of, I don't even remember what episode it was or like if this is even a real quote, but I think it's mm-hmm. Barney saying just in a really, really sad voice. He just says, I fell into the toilet. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't know. I. I just. I just remember watching that with my sister while holding up this antenna in my room, and we're just pissing ourselves laughing. And then from then on, every time one of us went to the toilet, we just come out of the toilet and we just go. I fell into the toilet. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience where you're watching something uh, like yeah. old, like The Simpsons, and you watch an episode, and then like as you're watching it, maybe a vague scene that you re you remember somewhere in the crevice of your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of gets like re memorized almost because you're watching it and it like, you're like, oh, this is the part that I weirdly vaguely remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. I always hate that. Oh, no. Like to this, to this day, <laughs> when hate you hate to, it. Why? Because I feel like it kind of like reminds me how uh, 
at this moment how weird and fucked up my brain is where mm. you store these weird pieces of useless information right. that yeah. don't mean anything and potentially don't mean anything your entire life. And you have this brief moment of euphoric discovery where you remember <laughs> where it's from. Yeah. And you're like, why is my brain programmed like this? Yeah, also it's like, you ask that question, like, why is it this that I remember? Yeah, like it's frustrating because <laughs> yeah. you're like, why is such a an intense feeling of uh, relief m memorizing this mm. thing that I had no memory of really, but it's subconsciously there and I have some kind of brief flashbacks. Or yeah. It's weird, it freaks me out. Yeah, for the longest time, I, yeah, for the longest time, uh, the, the lyrics of Jingle Bells for me was Jingle Bell, Batman Smells, Robin Lays an Egg. Okay. And for the longest time, I didn't know that the Simpsons had programmed that into my mind, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you watch wait, the Tom Scott video about it? Wait, the, wait I didn't know. Wait, did wait. the Simpsons create that? Wait, no, no, no. There's a, okay, this is great. Uh, Tom Scott made a video about this, about how depending on, uh, I guess, which country you're from and whatever, there's like, there's like 20 different versions of this. People have thought were the version. Yeah, because yeah. you said Robin lays an egg. Yeah, Robin lays an egg. For me, it's Robin laid an egg. It might be laid an egg. You, know? uh, yeah, <laughs> you should you should go and watch the Tom Scott video. It'll blow your mind. Okay. It's literally like a weird kind of collective mis misremembering to yeah. the point where everyone for some reason has a different thing that they remember. Yeah, Mandela effect. <laughs> but not even like that. It's like weirder than that. Cause really? that's like everyone agreeing to misremember. This is everyone remembering a completely different thing. Yeah, but actually no, I remember because I think I remember that Simpsons episode. It was fucking, yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, the- Bart. No, no, it wasn't but Bart. I think that was it the was, most popular one, but there's a bunch of other ones. No, really it popular. was it was that episode where, um, what's the bully character in, in The Simpsons? Nelson. Nelson. It's when Nelson falls in love with Lisa. How and he fucked you, man. And he that takes shit. and he takes her back to his like crap shack house. Mm. And like, she, and Lisa sees like the guitar on the wall and he's like, oh, can you play? And Nelson's like, yeah, kind of. And he's like, oh, can you play me something? And he's like, all right. And he grabs Jingle the guitar, bells. goes, Jingle Bells! And he just starts singing that version of Jingle Bells. <laughs> oh, really? I, that's another <laughs> core memory of the <laughs> Simpsons memory. that I have. I don't remember why I remember that <laughs> episode. I swear to God, there's so many core memories to do with the Simpsons that oh I just my forgot God. about. So many. Until, uh, until you just see this random <laughs> thing and you're like, that reminds me of something from that I saw years ago from The Simpsons. Yeah, totally. Unrelated to this beer sounds like something America would try to ban. What? We got a band named Euro Hops. We don't want no Euro Hops in our great American states. <laughs> Euro Hop, where's the Amer Hop? Uh, do, do you guys have any childish, uh, no, childhood TV shows that you completely forgot that you watched and were like obsessed with for a while? Because I, I forgot this. such a specific question. <laughs> no, because, okay, number one, we watched, a, I'm sure we watched a lot of things when we were kids, yeah. right? Um, I, I kind of realized how much we don't remember. Cause obviously you remember mm. the Simpsons. Uh, and I remember Connor mentioning something called Land Before Time. And no, he was like, I, we I, didn't have that in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait, I was obsessed with Land Before Time. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I- The I, dinosaur I, one. The right? dinosaur yeah, one. Yeah, did, yeah. did they have that in Australia? We had it in Australia. I yeah. didn't really grow up watching it though. Right. But it was definitely on TV. Oh. It, was, it wasn't my favorite show though. Yeah, I, I remember as a kid, I watched The Land Before Time. I don't remember a single fucking thing about this, by the way. Yeah. All I remember is owning all of the VHSs and I would like <laughs> watch it well, on that's repeat. probably why you know it because I, I mean, I, I admittedly I was glued to the TV as a kid. Yeah. Uh, and I'd never heard of this until I was like 20. Land Before Time? Yeah, I'd never yeah. seen it before. Really? You've never seen like the dinosaur I swear it show? never aired on UK TV. I could be wrong. Maybe, actually this is a great question. Did Land Before Time- I swear like to God it did. 20 here, years here, ago, Yeah, we're gonna check our memory now. Yeah. Did Land Before Time- Maybe the viewers can also yeah. express yeah. if did they- it oh, Also, it might be an age thing as well, because- It could be, I know it's a little yeah. old, but like that never stopped. Like they used to play, you know, uh, Wallace and Gromit, which was quite old and they used to replay that all the time and other stuff. I had all the VHSs of that. Wallace and Gromit, I actually rewatched Wallace and Gromit a week ago. Well, like the I original watched, uh, show? The Wrong Trousers. Oh, that's a great one. Cause I kept seeing the, the penguin the on penguin, TikTok. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wait, it's like a 30 minute like film. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just watch it. It's yeah, 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah. That's uh, such a good movie. The first- 2007. The Land Before, t this, was, this was a TV series. There was no yeah, way- Yeah, it later aired on Boomerang in the UK in 2007. There, there is no way it aired for the first time in 2007. That must be- Yeah, isn't that, isn't that a show time. from like the 90s? Yes, 80s. 1988 yeah. is 80s. 80s. Yeah, um, it's so old. Yeah, Wallace and Gromit's fucking fire. I rewatched it, it was fucking amazing. Curse like, of the well, Were-Rabbit as well as yeah, a great one. Yeah, I was one. like, these are all, like this is just straight bangers. Yeah. Like, these are these still hold up today. Oh, totally. And oh. like, I, I definitely felt that as well when like I watched the new Chicken Run movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Chicken Run oh. 2. 
Yeah. Is it good? It's actually really good. Fuck, I want to watch yeah, it. Yeah, like I was surprised. I thought, cause like, it's been like, what, 20 years? O- yeah, over 20 years since the first films. one. Yeah. And the first movie is so damn good. So I was like, oh, I Man. hope this doesn't suck, but it was actually pretty good. They just, I, I the, the claymation is just so expressive. Oh, Ardman and, is goaded, bro. Yeah, and the little details they put in it is just fantastic. So good. So do, you, do you guys remember Recess at all? Was that my generation? Oh no, yeah, I remember generation? Recess. Yeah. Whilst oh. Grant bodies it, sorry guys. <laughs> oh, a, a, a kind of an obscure show that I don't know anyone else who knows it or even watched it. Yeah. Maybe it was only in Australia. Yeah. Uh, was the show called Anna, uh, Angelina Anaconda? Angelina Anaconda. Do you remember? I remember the this. newspaper cutouts. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god! I'm so glad you know. <laughs> wait, wait, I think I've that in British TV as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Was it a British so show? Was, it might have been a British show. Was it? Was it British? But that show. Oh my god! I was obsessed with that show. Oh, I remember I watched. Okay, you should like the cool memory. Uh, what is it like? Uh, Jake Long, American Dragon. Did you watch this show? Jake <laughs> Long, American Dragon. Is that what it's called? <laughs> what? Oh my god, dude! Angelina Anaconda looks fucking British. Do you know, do you know Angela cool- Anaconda? Excuse me. Do you, do you, do you know the core cool oh, memory you have with this States. show? The what? Do you know the core cool memory you have with this show? What? Which sounds like a fucking fever dream right oh, now. Yeah. But I remember I knew about this. But then I remember uh, renting the Digimon movie uh-huh. from Blockbuster. Yeah. And the intro of the Digimon movie is Angelina Anaconda. Oh, really? <laughs> or just like an episode? Of it? I, I, it, it was, it was like, it was, it was a s- What the Holy fuck shit. is that? Yes, I do know this show. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> because this came out of the exact same era as a Jackie Chan cartoon. Yeah. Remember that oh era? my God, the Jackie Chan <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> you remember this one? Holy yeah. fuck, I remember this show. I had, I had a DS game of this and it was fucking awful. <laughs> I remember I played the DS game, it was fucking dog. I remember my friend who was obsessed with Ben 10, loved this show. They were all the same era. Yeah. But ben 10 was actually the fire show though. Ben 10 was so good. Ben 10 was actually Oh fire. my God, I'm, try- I'm trying to remember the show. Like, okay, explain to me because this is this is a very much a core memory for uh, me uh. because it was how I started like appreciating the fucking best thing, which is emo girls. And I remember this is my <laughs> one of my first childhood crushes. Okay. Right? Um. It's it's it was this cartoon and it's a detective kind of cartoon. I believe it aired on like the Disney Channel, and there was like an emo girl and like a black guy, and it was kind of ah oh, so, so <laughs> search up emo girl black guy the, cartoon. Are you about the Mike Tyson cartoon? No no no. Was it, it was a Mike Tyson. It was, it was, know, it was, was like a, a it was like a detective it, detective girl cartoon. There's detective like cartoon. A, there's like a, a TV show with a. Uh, no, no, fuck. Oh, this is Fillmore. A- that is it. It's, it's Fillmore. Film- oh, Fillmore. I, oh, I know the name. Yeah. I know the name. Yeah. I think you fucking yeah. watched the it. detective series where Mike Tyson's like a Scooby Doo esque knockoff and it's like Adult <laughs> Swim, though. <laughs> so I remember that. Yes, yeah, I've, okay, I've, here we I've are. seen this. I've, I don't like remember much about it. Wait, that yeah. was your first childhood crush? Yeah, that, that, that was girl. my first. That girl, man. I, I that understand. girl. I understand. <laughs> All right, that's valid. That's valid. <laughs> Oh my god, this is this is taking me back, man. Yeah. <laughs> we are old. We are old. We are old. Kids today are what, looking at this and being like, "What the yeah, fuck what? is this shit?" I'm wondering. Yeah, it only went on for two years. Valid. Oh valid. damn, 2002, right. 2004. Jeez. Okay, for the next question, what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever posted on social media? Fuck. I mean, every early video. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, yeah. First, I'm, I'm, first few years of my career. I mean, I'm gonna be real. Uh, there's a segment of the Maid Cafe special that we did that I, I just, I haven't been able to watch it all through. What, what, which part? <laughs> the, the one where we were in the Maid Cafe, and you boys, when we all ordered different things. Oh, you did the nyan nyan, and shit. I had to do a fucking Eldritch <laughs> chant to like, to, to like, like summon the moe in this fucking cup or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it is it is actually because by the time we're filming this, the the main special just came out. Uh, it's really funny looking through the comments. And the main so, special is already out, Joe. No, that's what I'm saying. It's out by the time yeah. we're filming this. Um, but it's really funny looking through the comments and just so many people being like, "I love you guys, but I can't watch this. <laughs> it's it's too cringe." And I'm like, I get it. It's whatever. How do you okay. think we felt? Okay, pre YouTube though, pre pre YouTube. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I, I had like a. Do you remember this website called Bebo? I was about to- Oh my God, holy shit. <laughs> we didn't, see, I didn't, I knew about Bebo, but I didn't have an account. Yeah. I had like a fucking banner. It was like uh flow rider. It was like me thinking I was like, I was trying to be like cool. Yeah. I thought it was like sexy. I posted pig me on like, 
and it, was, <laughs> and it was like some kind of fucking, it was one of those, when you open up to your mate's page, it yeah. was just blast the fucking music they oh, chose. Oh yeah, that was my MySpace Whatever page. kind of like fucking flashy effects they put yeah. on there, yeah. it was fucking horrific. And then you For you pick, guys, it was Bebo, for me it was MySpace. Well, it was like, it was like- We had MySpace and Bebo. Bebo oh, was right. kid-friendly MSN. Oh, yeah. I see. But maybe a little too kid friendly. <laughs> I know. This posture, I don't know. It was a fucking dog shit site. But I, I remember even like four years back, I was like, it's gone, right? It's scrubbed. It's not, mm. It doesn't exist right now. Thank fuck for that. Oh, yeah, I really hope so because mine was cringe as fuck. Yeah. Looking back, because I just tried to make myself seem really, really fucking cool. <laughs> And like during like, I, I just, I, the one thing I remember was, <laughs> I thought this was so cool when I was like fucking 15 or whatever, how old I was, yeah. but during like the, uh, during like the, uh, during, during like the sex, like like segment where it was like male, female, mm. I just put yes, please. And I was like, <laughs> motherfucker, that's the funniest <laughs> shit. That's the funniest he's shit. Everyone, fucking comedian. <laughs> everyone's gonna see that and be like, yo, he's cool, man. To be he's fair, cool. that's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we laughed. <laughs> Maybe we're just, just children. Just the idea of a 19 year old guy going, yes, please. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, his hair is spiked up and he's about to record a video. <laughs> about why you should watch Mirai Nikki. <laughs> um, I, I, okay, actually, I, I think it's more interesting to ask what's the most embarrassing, or you feel is the most embarrassing thing you've ever posted as a YouTuber or creator? I, I actually know, now Now I remember, and one that I can definitely say with it full confidence- It could be honest as well. Is, yeah. is not, it's, not, it's not even before that. It was my Sword Art Online review I wrote on my <laughs> website. Is it still up? I, I don't know. I, I think I think the website's gone because I- I'd kill yeah. for a reading about I, it. I, yeah. I think I, cause I, I did it on uh what was it like WordPress or one of those like, you know, third party website companies. Mm -hmm. um, and because I stopped paying, I think they just took down the website. But yeah, that was when I gave Sword Online a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> And that was pretty. The it's pretty season what the was fuck great. It was pretty fucking what embarrassing, happened, Joey. I think again, I've said this in videos, but I think I was just like, I was swallowed up by the hype. The hype was <laughs> the hype was crazy. That it just like, and also at the no, time, what happened as, with your opinion of Sword Art Online? Joey? Oh, I, that's, wa that's... I watched the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I watched the second half of Sword Art Online, and it was gone. No, I mean, I think we forget how cool Sword Art. Oh wait, Art no, Online it is was. still there. Holy shit! Oh yeah, here it is. Oh my god. Whoa, I haven't seen this. Oh, wow, I'm surprised. Okay, yeah, look up Sword Online. <laughs> oh my God. There it is. Oh my God. When was this posted? How long is this review? It's not long. When is was there, this? Wait, is there replies? Go down, go down to the bottom. It should say right. the score. Yeah, there we go. 9.5. <laughs> Recommendation. Wait, 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 wait. Highly recommend. Wait, do wait. you have any comments? Is wait, there any wait. comments? Yeah, go down to the com oh, oh, there's no comments. Oh, some, some of my reviews had comments. Shit. Uh, wait, 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 wait go. Final? Can we see the final tagline of uh, all yeah. the stuff? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, bottom one. This series is credited as being a clever, cleverly instructed, uh, structured as well and well presented series, blending a mixture of a different genres <laughs> such as psychological romance and drama, psychological epic <laughs> fantasy of Sword Online. If you loved a cell world, then you will absolutely fall in love with this series, and you'll also wish when something like this ha happens to us, uh, happened happened to us too. I know I did. So you wanted to be Kirito. I wanted yeah. to be Kirito. Oh You're my kidding. God. I yeah. mean, to be fair, like, I think we all wanted to be can Kirito you, can you go at one point. The tagline Wait, that Joey put on this? Yeah, go up to the very top. Your blog page is 1.4 million views. Yeah. Dude, people are every, like- <laughs> His tagline is, every gamer's dream comes true <laughs> in this fantastical <laughs> tale of epic proportions. <laughs> It's so funny. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you're a gamer or game lover, <laughs> you've always dreamed of jumping into the world of your favorite game. Stop. And experiencing everything no. that happens there. Like it was real. Stop it. <laughs> I don't want this. <laughs> oh my I, God. I need to go and delete this website. <laughs> this is great. I didn't realize it was still on. Holy shit. This is God, amazing. I stopped paying this URL. How, how has nobody left a comment? That, that yeah, is, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what? I am That's actually disappointed. This is the best stuff. We should uh, leave review. a comment. We should leave a comment likes. right now. You got three, three likes. Three likes, let's Hell go. Yeah. We should leave a comment right now. <laughs> um, Be like, what yeah. the fuck? Wait, I mean, do you, have to, you presumably have to log in, right? I don't think let's, so. Let's try leaving a comment. Let's try leaving a comment. What should we say? Saying, Yo, good sir. review, the anime man. <laughs> <laughs> God, what was wrong with me? Yeah, so you gotta yes, log in. Nice review. Gotta log in. Uh, you gotta, oh, you gotta log in. in. Uh, okay. I'm sure after this episode, there'll be plenty of nice. Yeah, yeah. thanks guys. That's Appreciate so funny it. that you thought it was you gone. Yeah. So you like that? You think that's the single most worst thing you've ever posted? It's. I mean, look at it. It's pretty fucking cringe. 
I and I was what? When was this posted? Go, go up a bit. Is there a, is there a date? From when, this was probably posted. It was before YouTube, so probably around twenty. Uh, and yeah, it must have been twenty twelve. Must because have been right as it ended. Right as it ended. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, oh wait, go down. December twenty. I wrote this day before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing in 2012? Oh my God, 12 years wow. ago. 12 years ago, I wrote this. So I was what? I would have been 19. Yeah. 19, 19 good when taste, I wrote this. Joey, good taste. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Christ almighty. I mean, for me, it's still probably always, we've brought this up on Trash Days before. It's probably always going to be the, what was it called again? The AniTube, uh, oh, rap? The, the rap, rap oh, thing. Yeah. The rap. yeah. What do you mean? That's my favorite thing. You've ever made. <laughs> I it's think, that motherfucking tea. I think I, I still just, remember that. Shit. I, I mean, AniTube was always cringe in a, in its own way. I think that encapsulated what AniTube was Listen, like I, back in the day. I think it's more cringe that I got someone to write mine for me. You, you know? got Gray Fox to write. He literally really. is like amazing rapper. Yeah, like, yeah he is. he's an amazing rapper. So I just caught, and I, I was like, "Can you record it for me so I can record it?" <laughs> And then I recorded it and I remember everyone was like, whoa, whoa, we're kind of can rap. And I was like, no, I could just, I can copy someone else. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it just is yours? Oh then? man, I was trying to think about this, man. I was trying to, I mean, uh, you put the, yourself out there more than all of us, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, even like when you start doing kind of stuff that's kind of out there in the start, you do think like, you do worry, you're like, there's no going back. Yeah. Mm. Once you do like a half naked cosplay video, you're like, okay, there's kind of no turning back from this. Like this is like useful, but also we do live in a time where the standards are very different for men and women. <laughs> yep. Men, you can, a guy can get his cock out and then just do serious journalism right after it. And guys are like, this is understandable. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh my God. But if a girl did it, it kind of be a little bit different, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know. Is there one specific video that I can point to that Oh, I mean this, actually, you know what I should do? I should go through my unlisted. While, while, while you're thinking, I just like, I just remember this thing. Mm. So normally every time we post like a trash taste video or trash taste special, my mom sends me a picture and she's like, oh, I really enjoyed it. It was so funny. And then in the maid special, she just, all she could say was she posted a picture. Uh, she posted a picture of me doing the maid thing. And she was like, ah, you uh, work really hard to make money, huh? <laughs> 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 and I was like, okay, okay, Damn. mom. Okay, okay. You, was, you, your mom didn't have to slam dunk oh, like man. that. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. Oh, dude, that, that strip club video was hard. That oh, yeah? Was tough. That was embarrassing to make. I thought it was good. It, it turned out well, yeah, but it was, good video. It was yeah. painful filming it. Because right. they were just like, go grind on go grind on them. I was like, dude, I can't. I, I, and then they were like, go grind on Kaho. And I was like, I'm, I like, go up to Kaho. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, I was like fake grinding near Kaho. <laughs> and Kaho was like, it's okay. Just you do what you it's gotta for the do. Video. Um, fuck, let me just, I'm scrolling through these fucking videos, dude. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. These videos are so bad. I don't know, man. So far, I think I'm winning for the biggest cringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you should be proud of that. I man. had to say, hey, man, I had to start. We all start somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> As I half coping. Everyone, everyone starts somewhere. Hey, I, I, I did a Bleach review. You hey, know? to be fair, I was reviewing some like pretty fucking not talked about shows like Campione <laughs> and like fucking Arcana Familia. No oh. one, who the fuck watched those shows? <laughs> I did. And I wrote a review for them. Did you go on like anime forums before you had any presence online? Not really. Um, I don't know. The way, the way my site grew was really weird. Whereas like, I didn't think anyone would actually start looking into it and like yeah. reading them. And then as you saw, like the entire website is 1.4 million views. Yeah. And that's pretty much like, that got built up even before I started my YouTube channel. So like, it's really bizarre. I think people were just like starving for content like this. Oh the yeah, they definitely were. Yeah. What the because like, I remember I joined a few forums way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I remember some, someone found my old, uh, I had this, there was this forum called just animeforums.com or .net or something. Yeah. Uh, and someone found it and realized that every, like for like the first few years, all of, all like the big videos I did, I had already made a post on this forum mm. about this exact topic, yeah. like years and years and years ago. Right. And then they just realized that I was just taking all my old, all my old topics that I was <laughs> posting on this one forum and repackaging it into a video. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, animeforums.com, is it still there? Animeforums.net. Animeforums.net. 
Is this, oh, is this the same one? I don't know. Such I mean, a, they might have changed Such it. a giguk. It's it's a Sasuke and Naruto um, <laughs> avatar. <laughs> yeah, no. let's just go on the website. It, it, it used to, it used, to uh, used to be shortened to a4.net. Okay, so, so maybe it's not the same one. Maybe it's not the same one. But you know, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, either way. Yeah, did you find your video? I couldn't. I mean, there's a lot of embarrassing ones. <laughs> right. I, could, I couldn't believe how how many views some of these videos I made had. Some yeah. of these Black Butler ones had like fucking 500,000 views of me pretending to be Claude playing yeah. a game. Like how, how does that, I, I, 500K is still a lot now. Yeah. How the fuck was I getting 500K playing games as Claude? Well, it's because the fucking Black Butler fandom will eat anything and everything that has to do with Black Butler, especially back then. Like, when did you make those? Like what, 2014? No, no, so 20, 2015. So 2015, when I, well, right? Yeah. When I, when I started making Black Butler stuff, which I don't even know how it came about. Well, mm. I do kind of remember how it came about. I, 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 it was kind of the only voice I could really copy right. well at the time. Right. And so mm -hmm. I kind of just did it. I didn't really have any feelings towards Black Butler. Right. But there, there wasn't like a huge fandom at the time. Well, there, there was previously, but it was very dormant. Well, maybe there wasn't a huge fandom, but there might've been that small fandom might've just like repeatedly watched those videos, yeah. right? And that's what yeah, how it definitely might've built grew. Up. I mean, yeah. I remember getting messages that were like, I've still, even in my, Ten, nearly 10 year career of doing this. Yeah. I have never had messages that were in as intense <laughs> from strangers as the ones I got back then. Yeah. The, in the intensity of which some of these messages were composed was like, I, and I thought that was normal. So like now when I like go to my Instagram messages or I go to emails, it's mm. super tame. <laughs> like compared to what I used to get sent, it yeah. was, I used to get full unhinged like fan behavior. Right, right. Um, and I don't know, I don't know wh why that was. Uh. And I can't, I don't know what's different. Well, it's just the Black Butler fans, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. And I also think there's this weird thing that happens when you're a, like a medium sized, because I think it's fair to say that we're all pretty large creators now. Mm. But when you're like a small to medium sized creator, there's this very weird thing that happens where you're quite big, but I think people still, because a lot of people message us and they just, they know that we're never going to see it, which mm. is true because I don't fucking check anything. Mm. Uh, except I just admitted that I checked some of it sometimes, which I do, because <laughs> I'm curious sometimes. But uh, most people rec realize that we'll never reply and we won't see what they send us. Yeah. But when you're at this really like small to middle size, people think that you'll see it. Yeah, like, so uh, like is, roughly uh, around like the one to 500,000 subs range, I'd say. Yeah. One to 500,000. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd say even like 10 to 10, I mean, 500,000 is even a bit much, I think. I okay. think like 100, sorry, like 50 to, 200. Right. I think some people think of you as still being reachable, right. which I don't know how, why this is the case, uh, but I yeah. noticed, yeah, like when you said around when I got to 500, yeah. it, it definitely stopped. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for But sure. when I was around 100, I used to get a lot of messages that were really intense and mm. like strange. Because you'd read all of them as well, right? Uh, yeah, because I, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was like, you know, I, just, I thought, fuck it, I'd, you yeah, know, why not? Yeah, for sure. People would send me the whole life story or, mm -hmm. you know, would give me this whole spiel and it's just weird. And I just like uh, look back at that and I'm like, wow, what a fucking weird time. <laughs> And Black Butler new season's coming out, so. Yeah, so no, they're gonna I come have... right, they're, they're open the bunker doors and they're like, it's I, time I, to come out. I'm getting back on it. <laughs> I don't think I ever asked, how did you get into voice acting? Um, Yeah, what, I mean. What, what made you want to get into voice acting specifically? I can't remember which anime <clears throat> specifically made me feel this way, but anime in general does this thing to your brain where it makes you want to voice act. Mm. To some, some people, it just turns these cogs. That just make Because if you speak to a voice actor, yeah, all of them, at least nowadays, the, the new generation of voice actors, not the old ones. Most of them, I'd say like 90%, wanted to do it because they got into it via games or anime. Yeah. Normally yeah. Japanese media of some sort. Mm. I don't know, it's this fantastical story that kind of makes you want to- Well, it's also of, because, especially in the in the Japanese voice acting world, the, the, some, of the, some of these actors' skills are just like on another level. But I, I, I think that a lot of voice actors, the ones starting out getting into it, they don't even consider that. Right. But I think that you, you come to appreciate that a lot yeah. when, you, yeah. when you get into it more because <clears> you can just, the mastery on craft. Mm on display, sorry. Um, but there's just something about anime that's so fantastical that like kind of like draws this kind of want to be these characters sure. and, and kind of go through what they're going through. And, yeah. I, and I, at the time, I, I think when I first started doing it, I don't think it was out of sincere want to act. And I, I don't know what that, cause you know, when I talk to like Pete or someone, there's like a different, mm. I think there's a different switch in my brain that when he talks about acting, it's different how about, how about um, when I talk about acting, well, I he feel did like- theater, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just it's a, very different. I think it's a totally different, even though I, I would argue that if you can act, you can voice act. I think I fully right. believe that. I think it's the, they share the same skills. Mm. 
I think if you only voice act, you can't quite fully act because there's a lot of right. you still need to have a bit of lessons on hitting your marks doing all the body movements maybe yeah. even facial doing expressions, nothing, facial expressions. Yeah. that kind of stuff is quite difficult um but i i don't know it drew me into it and i i kind of and i don't know what it is because there has to be that leap when you want to do something so you've mm. all had this thing where late at night you're watching something you're like right tomorrow i'm doing this thing and then you mm. don't do it Mm, yeah. Right, it could be like I'm starting this hobby, or mm, I'm yeah. gonna start practicing this, and we don't do it. We, we're all guilty of doing this, mm. but for some reason, whatever it was about anime really compelled me to then immediately figure out how to hook my Xbox microphone up to my PC, download the software, and start recording shit and right. sending it off yeah. to random people who were also also as clueless as me. Right, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it kind of just took off. I mean, it was I don't know, I, I just did it, you know, like this uh, PewDiePie art video. Yeah. everyone keeps talking about yeah. how yeah. insane it is i'm yeah. like if you truly do something every single day mm -hmm. for for hundreds of days mm -hmm. you will get pretty fucking good at that yeah. thing yeah yeah the hard part is doing it every day yeah, being consistent exactly. but when, when i started voice acting I, I i literally did it every single day yeah. for hours on end because oh, i was totally. so addicted to it yeah and i also loved the community aspect of it back mm -hmm. then it was a huge community thing and there was there wasn't many of us there was like you know, like less than a hundred. It's it's funny how many people in that community are now professional yeah, voice right? actors or yeah. voice actresses. Like I, I came, I remember um, there's a few, a few people because everyone kind of came at the community in a different way. Mm -hmm. But when I started out, I, I remember very distinctly uh, uh, Kovac who started around oh, the same time as I did, actor. who now is in uh, so many things. He's in digital uh, media circus. He's done mm -hmm. some other amazing stuff and a really nice guy. Yeah, And it's cool seeing you go on your own journey and seeing other people just go through it. And even back then, he was very, very talented. Mm. I he's remember- He's also Kaneki in Tokyo Ghoul in five minutes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. He was. oh perfect. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I distinctly remember <laughs> when I, because I, when I I'd started, I was doing it, uh, we all kind of just did these dumb auditions where we would, when we knew a project was just a, never gonna be finished, or right. it was by a guy who was just, he's like, I'm gonna pay you. And he's like, you're not gonna pay us. We would submit these joke auditions because mm. they were public, so people would listen to them. And I remember that, his joke auditions were so good. Yeah. That we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like this guy's this guy's joking is better than like our serious performance. Right. <laughs> but he's a, but uh and so it was kind of like a fun little learning experience. And then mm -hmm. I somehow had bullshitted my way into doing it seriously mm -hmm. from all of that experience. Cause mm -hmm. we'd kind of all held ourselves accountable. Cause a lot of the people who were voice acting back then, you know, every now and then someone would be in the right location to be able to go to one of these voice acting workshops. Mm -hmm. And maybe they would get successful, but they would still keep in touch people. So they would kind of trickle down information and people were very open about sharing information about how to improve. Mm. Yeah. So I think the overall quality of voice actors online improved quite a lot. Mm. Uh, people who came from only online. So it was kind of an interesting community and it kind of got my start. And I always say how, how I got into YouTube was because I got very bored of waiting for auditions. Uh, sorry, I'm ranting. By the way, I'm going. No, 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 no you're this fine. Is, yeah, interesting. Um, I got yeah. very bored of doing voice acting auditions because you would sit there for like five hours a day, and you would do these audition, 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 and in your head, it's kind of like this. Um, auditioning is almost the 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 funnest part because mm -hmm. it's the least amount of work for the most reward, which yeah. is the yeah. you got the role. Yeah, you're like, oh fuck yeah, and then you actually start recording for some of this stuff, and you're like. This fucking sucks. <laughs> this fucking sucks. Because you have to bear in mind, most voice actors, 90% of the stuff that they've ever voice acted in, because they've probably done a bunch of stuff where they've done all the cool stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. It's probably just garbage. Stuff yeah. that like is maybe like hot messes. Because someone else is also learning too. You're learning, they're learning, we're all You've learning. You've also got to get a CV up somehow, right? Right, like yeah, everyone has to learn and everyone yeah. has to find a way. And it's all about, as a voice actor, you have to become a professional con artist as well, where you almost have to leverage the best thing you've been in right. to get the next best thing, yeah. yeah, right? And so you're constantly having to be like, I've voiced in this pretty cool thing. It's a pretty big deal. And you, yeah. you say it and you, maybe you know deep down, it's not that big of a deal, but you have to kind of like sell yourself. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's like a, it's kind of a, a tough business because it's not only do you have to be a great actor, you have to be uh, a great a salesman. salesman. Yeah, which yeah. is which is tough. I would say that's true for a lot of life. I think that's the majority you know? of the entertainment industry. A lot of freelance, industry. a yeah. lot of entertainment yeah. industry, which people don't appreciate that. A lot of people want to be like, my talent speaks for itself. And it's like, it's like, well, that sometimes is, it doesn't. I, I don't know because I feel like- <laughs> it's generational. It's, it's very tough to find that. Right. Every now and then there's like one person who has the luxury of doing that. Yeah. But it's always by like complete fluke. You Maybe you work with Garn. Garn is, maybe Garn has influence. He recommends you. And then yeah. there's a series of chain events, but that's a very rare situation. I, I feel like selling is a skill that is just, because I, I fucking hate 
salesmanship and like mm. sk- selling as a skill. I've always thought I hated it. And the more I grow older, the more I realized it is so intrinsic to success in life. Oh yeah. Because you talk about that, like, but like indirectly, you go to a job interview. What's one of the most important yeah. skills in any job interview? It's selling mm. yourself. You want a promotion, you want a raise. Yeah. What is the most important skill? It's selling your value, like selling your value to the job or to mm. your boss or the, to mm. the company it's in. And you, you know, these are the moments that are, are going to define how successful a mm. lot of people are. And even if you hate selling, I do, I kind of realize how many, how many points in my life that I needed to be able to sell myself mm. in order to get X thing done or mm. something else done. I mean, you know? uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the prime example I can give to like, at how port- important selling is when you don't think it is, yeah. uh, charities. Yeah. Like mm. think about every charity you probably know about, the, mm. the charities that you think when you hear the word charity is probably one that has been so successful in selling its image or story. Mm. You know, you think of like Make-A-Wish, super powerful and, and very easy to sell stories mm. yeah. because it practically, I mean, hey, we, we get to make these amazing moments happen that on camera are very emotionally powerful. Mm. And they're not just bringing a camera because they want to document it and save it. They're bringing a the camera because they want to they want to sell it. They yeah, want to get sure. more sponsors. Yeah. They want to get mm. more donations. You know, and that's the, if if a charity has to consider something that is purely philanthropic and about giving and helping, if mm-hmm. something like that has to sell, then why do you think you are above selling in whatever you're doing, yeah. right? You have to sell, it's what it is. Yeah. Uh, in whatever it is you do. Yeah, and I think going at the angle of like, well, I have the talent is like really dangerous to do because, well, you might think you have the talent, but not not everyone might agree that you have the talent. And if no, no, I, everyone I, doesn't agree, then it's going to be really difficult I, I, to try and use that as a selling point. I think there's a, I, I, I think there's a like a bit of a pivot because I don't mm. think it necessarily is like, oh, I am talented. It's mm. more of like a lot of people I'm think- I'm above it. Yeah, I'm, well. A lot of people think my talent should speak for itself. Which right. is not true. Which, yeah, not which, true. Is, yeah, which, which is, is like a very, I mean, it can happen, but well, it's yeah, very yeah. rare it case. It can happen. The, the, yes. traject- the normal trajectory is for any kind of entertainment or, or uh, even like any uh, job. business is yeah, that any like business. you you have to, in the early stages, really sell yourself yeah. to yeah. whatever it is. Totally. You know? Yeah. And then once you get to a more comfortable position, you maybe you found your audience <laughs> or you found your clients, whatever it is, then you can kind of, pull off the gas, mm, yeah. you can let your work speak for itself. People are recommending you because they, yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's a, you know, and that's where I think fortunately, like, you know, with our YouTube stuff, that's where we've gotten to now where we're very fortunate. We don't have to, don't have to do a lot of outreach, don't have to grind a lot. Mm-hmm. I think we just upload stuff and uh, it's We don't have healthy. to like go out of our way to like try and prove a point, right? Like we, no, we I, just I, kind I, of do know. our own thing. And then we have in a position now where like people are more, coming to us than we are necessarily going out to them. Like not to say that we're never going out and like trying to outreach for any kind of opportunity. I'm always trying to do that. Yeah, of course, we're always doing that. But like when we all started off, I'm sure like that was the only thing that, well, that was the only way when we you're could trying get to our hands out way, there, right? right? Because yeah. like when you're starting off, no one fucking knows how talented you are. No one knows how much like cool stuff you can possibly make or do like, because you don't really have that kind of experience yet. So you have to make yeah. it a point, yeah. as you said, to like, yeah, sell yourself, which again, I fucking hated doing. Yeah. <laughs> what, did you guys, you guys both went to university. Did you guys have to, oh, what's it called? When you were applying to uni- the university, did mm. you have to, okay, so you had like your, I guess, CV. You do interview. But you also had to send a- uh, Cover letter. Cover letter. I That's fucking hate cover called. letters. They're stupid. What, to, to, <sighs> to a university? Yeah, yeah in the UK. Did you, did you, you have did. to? No. Motherfucker. Oh. So in Australia, you you do a test uh, in year twelve, and I, then yeah. if your score is high enough, then you just get in. Yeah, I, we, we, I, we basically like in the UK when you apply to university. I don't know if it's, this is still the same, but you had like your whatever you get your test scores, and uh, that's on like one form. But then you also have a cover letter where the aim of the the aim of the cover letter is to suck your own dick as much as yeah. possible mm. and hope that there is still enough dick to suck for. I mean, like, I, I, had to, I, I had to do right? that for my internship. That's right? normally yeah. for um, the, you know, the, the higher up universities, they yeah. want to start, because the competition is so broad. Right. Yeah, they want to yeah. start being stupidly nitpicky and be like, yeah. okay, no, you don't get to go to Harvard because you had a spelling error in your company. Yeah. Which yeah. is true, you shouldn't. And like, I, I just totally fucking, I just lied. <laughs> you do, letter. everyone lies. I just, I just lied. Yeah, everyone lies. I yeah, was like, I, like hit, everyone you, lies you, on their resumes. Everyone yeah. lies on their you, cover letters. You said about like story selling people. So like, I remember inventing this fucking story on my cover letter mm. that, oh, I, I read this book 
once in, <laughs> sc- in school and I had like the exact book. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, I read this book once and it inspired me to become an engineer and look into engineering. Little and did I, they know I can't read. And <laughs> as I was young, I took apart a calculator in order and, <laughs> and that's planted the seed. And this probably is why like I, this is how I write my scripts in like anime. Yeah. This, this probably started, this is probably the first time You're I fucking learning did this. something. Yeah, when I'm just like, yeah, and I, I, I opened up a calculator when I was a kid and I planted the seed of interest in engineering. And now I, oh, please, let maybe me that's why I got denied from McDonald's. Cause I definitely <laughs> didn't do that. I just, <laughs> I just told the truth. I'm like, yeah, I'm a dumb 15 year old kid that doesn't do shit. I didn't even apply for this job, uh, but it'd be nice to get some extra cash. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. You, you have to do a lot of uh, sacrifices to make things work yeah. mm-hmm. occasionally, uh, sure. be it to your own <laughs> ego or whatever it be. Um, but it was fun. I mean, I, I, you know, starting out in voice acting was a great way because I felt like I, it allowed me to come into YouTube with, um, with a ton of knowledge right out of the gate of how to make the video sound good, mm. which I feel like back then was a huge problem yeah. on YouTube. People just, people just thought the Blue Yeti was the god you stick this USB, which if you, I don't know if people still use it now. I don't think they do. Anymore. I mean, I started off with one, but like, it's crazy. Like audio was, I don't think people appreciate just how bad audio was back then. Yeah. Uh, and so I think it, it just gave me a huge leg up and allowed me to immediately show like, hey, look, I can put whatever fucking cartoon visuals on the screen or whatever, but like the, it sounds great. Mm. Like it's a good sounding video. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, 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 you know, I think it was kind of like, I don't know, in a weird, I don't believe in destiny, but if it was, if there was any kind of it, it was probably a play there. Yeah. But kind of sure. steering me towards this trajectory. I thought I'd hear you say that line. No, oh, yeah. I don't believe in destiny, <laughs> but, but this <laughs> was fate. <laughs> well, you just kind of, it's kind of weird because when, when you start Why something- Why do you believe in destiny? Um, Kai, can we get more beers, please? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why don't I yeah, believe why, in why, destiny? Why do you well, believe in destiny? Are, uh, we, are we going in that why direction? Are we in Destiny, Connor? I think, uh. I think <laughs> Destiny means different things to different people, yeah. right? I think Destiny to some people is take the hand off the wheel, let, let them do it. Let, but, <laughs> let the G-man upstairs figure it out. Yeah, but I, I think that's a, that's a bad way of looking at it. I think a, a helpful way of looking at something like Destiny is I'm gonna do everything in my power and then I hope all of the pieces in the universe will align. Mm. And, 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 and if you look at it from that sense, I do think that in terms of YouTube, it was kind of like the perfect storm for me to get into it, where it was like, okay, I didn't get into it, even though I did try to upload videos when I was younger. Yeah. You know, you fucking hypercam your RuneScape vid and throw it up. Yeah, and you're like, course. why didn't yeah. it work? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, I, I waited until I was like 19. So I got my cringe out of, well, most of my cringe out of <laughs> You know, and I'd learned all this and I'd just happened to watch pretty much only YouTube for years. Yeah. And it was kind of just the perfect amalgamation of like things that aligned in my life yeah. to kind of give me a fight and chance <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. To, to make it work. Even though I never intended for that to be the case. So it's like, even then it's like, you know, I don't know, like if I, like, I just don't, I think destiny is, is an, an I don't unhelpful know, Connor, friend. That sounds like it's, destiny to me. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, cause I, it's only in hindsight where I can look at it and go, yeah, I guess it could make sense, yeah, but, yeah. but also, I feel like then that destiny also takes away all of the the work you put into something. Yeah, that you're, is true. You're, like, you're I feel, I, that, I like, feel, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but like, oh, no. bring him in, Kai. In, in a lot of ways, I, I need a beer for all. What I'm, in a, in a lot of ways, the word destiny is kind of thrown around yo. in a, in in a kind of like weird past tense way. You know, like whenever like someone is in like a very fortunate position that they like dreamed of. Yeah, no one like, wants to think job. destiny I got fucked over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well it's like, you know, you, you're, you you fulfilled everything you wanted to. And then you can, as you said, look back in hindsight and go, oh, maybe it was destiny, right? Like no one yeah. in the present time is like trying to strive for something and going, I'm going to have this. It's my destiny. Like no one's going to say that. But then I also <laughs> think that like, it, like you're like, not a fucking anime character. It's the same thing of being like- Maybe I am, Joey. Right? <laughs> it's like when you- I know you are with when your you're hair. Playing a video game. <laughs> when you're playing a video game, right? And uh, you spec into only like, I don't know, agility and strength. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you keep playing, you keep playing. And then two days later, you come across this armor set that is only, can only be worn if you have really high speed and really high, high agility. Yeah. It's like claiming that because you cared to put that in, mm. those points in that tree, it came into existence, <laughs> which is not true because yeah. these stuff would happen yeah. and someone else would have filled the spot that you would have occupied, right? right. right? So right. it's, I think it's a, it's a comforting thing to feel like the work you put in is deliberately being rewarded, but mm. I don't think that's the case. No, I think 
if you are a human being and you are improving at stuff in general, opportunities just will come your way if you are putting yourself out there. Yeah. And that can be perceived as destiny or whatever you want, but it's just it's just how it is. Do you believe in destiny, God? I don't know. I, I will tell you a thought that fucked me up recently. All right, all right. Tell me what fucked you up, God. And any physics majors can please <laughs> enlighten me as, oh. as we're about to go. Um, Why is that every time we drink, Gant always brings up physics as a topic? I, know, so I have like- I mean, just, I mean, I'm not Paul, complaining, I love it. gonna be on Suicide Watch after these fucking the, fact checks he's about to do. I, I, it just fucks me up sometimes because when I think about these things. Sure. This is like the 3 a.m. thought that I have before I go to sleep and I remember mm-hmm. when I I'm drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know that you know that time travel like exists, right? Oh my right? God. Yeah, but only into the future. <laughs> but only, okay, okay. Here's the Fuck thing. Say, only right. into the future, right? Yes. Time travel, but it has been proven that you can time travel to the future. Proven by who? By scientists. Well, it's it's like- oh, You mean time dilation? Theori- yeah. Theoretically, Theoretically oh, yeah. you can, but yeah. like everything about our modern understanding of physics says that you time can- Time dilation Paul Based yeah. on time dilation, you can go into the future, but it is, as of our understanding, it is impossible to go back to the past. Yeah, so- oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so technically time travel does only, exist. You can only slow down time. You can't- you speed can't. Up. Yes. You can't speed up. Time, you can't. But you know, time is relative. Yes. You know? yes. Time is relative. You know? Yeah. Because even then, speed up is incorrect. Like saying time, yeah. you're you're yeah. going in the future is incorrect. You, you your perception of time is passive. Yeah. 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 You it's think right, you're right. you it, from your perspective, you're in the future. But yeah. That doesn't mean you're in the future. But right. I, I'm just wondering because I, maybe there's a gap in my knowledge. Right, but okay. Yes, if, probably. If there is, <laughs> just assume there are multiple gaps. In there all is definitely knowledge. a gap in my knowledge. Okay, but okay. if there is time dilation and there are some people who can, I guess, perceive themselves in their own frame of reference to yeah. travel to the future, mm. does that mean the future already exists? See, you haven't seen the latest Kurzgesagt video. Oh yeah. Because he mentions exactly this. Oh, does he actually? Yeah, there's a video, the <laughs> recent Kurzgesagt video that fucked me up was like his, it was this like thought experiment or idea that yeah. the present, past and future is all happening at the same time. Yeah, so like if 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 time travel does exist in like the future, if, if we can, you know, invent time travel, does that mean that there is a version of you know, a, a passage of time that already exists in the future and also in the past and is like existing in this moment. Well, quantum physics would say yes. <laughs> Joey, don't bring out the quantum <laughs> physics again. I, mean, I swear true. to God. The moment, the moment Joey God. says quantum <laughs> physics, you know he's gonna <laughs> spout some grade A bullshit. It's true. <laughs> hey, I was right about Schrodinger, was I not? <laughs> That's I the easiest concept. I didn't see a mood on fucking correction in that one. <laughs> Mudan, how many corrections have you done so yeah, far? Yeah. I, I, I don't. I again. I, the reason why I, I, I love thought experiments. I, th- I love thought experiments yeah. as well. But I hate it when people try to be like, ah, it's out of my control. I'm like, no, you just, you're just giving up. And yeah. You're saying that you're you trying feel, not to understand. You feel you, and it is hard not to feel like you have no power of what's happening because we are just one person. But yeah. If we've seen anything in uh, <laughs> that's how nihilists are born. Yeah, yeah, if we see if we've seen anything in the the world, one one person can certainly make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, uh, quite drastically yeah. in our time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can look at recent figures and you can you can figure yeah, that out. Yeah, that sure. People are pretty impactful if you want to be a. But it depends what you want. Like, what what does what does making an impact feel? Is it just means that you get to celebrate Taco Tuesday without worrying how much you spend every Tuesday, or is it is it changing the world in a meaningful way? Like, what yeah. is that for you? Like, yeah. I think it's different for everyone. What is it for you, Connor? What is what? What what is what is making an impact in the world for you? Fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're going there. Fuck. Making I've, an impact. I'm, I'm too busy. We can talk about it. I don't know. I mean, like, what? <sighs> I want to give me that third beer. <laughs> this is a dry zero. This is non-alcoholic. Yeah. Oh, non-alcoholic. This is there must be a beer there. There's a beer right there. The hop one. Oh, you want the modest one? I'll take the modest one. Yeah. I'll take. Give me the, the give me the hop euro hop or something. I don't this know. This is. Oh, give me the, the euro hop. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, to me, I just. What's the goal? What's the goal? What's the goal? I would like to leave an impact on people in the same way different media and different stories have left an impact on me. If I can, if I can, okay, here's, here's, here's my thing, right? If I can make an audience feel something, whether that be laughter or a different kind of emotion, I've done something. Mm. And to me, that is what making an impact means for me. Doesn't necessarily mean to be mean to be like a deep message or something. If I have given someone, you know, a brighter five seconds for a lot or for a joke that I made, I'm like, ah, 
I, I, made, I, made, I made an impact. All right. Uh, because that's what, what art is to you. Huh? That's what art is. Oh, to, to me, you. art is totally, I mean- Shared experience. Art is emotions to me. Like, to me, like the worst thing you can do is for like any piece of media is to make something and then feel nothing. Mm. To me, making something that induces like hatred or like a bad emotion is more valuable than something that makes me feel nothing. And that's exactly why I say School Days is a 10 out of 10, because it made me feel <laughs> a <laughs> very <laughs> negative emotion. And I keep using that. I, I use that exact point in my arguments, but none of y'all fucking listen to me. Problem but you with, know I'm right. Problem with school days <laughs> is, uh, fuck, how do I, how do I argue? It's shit. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank it's you, Connor. Shit. Thank you, Connor, it's shit. Thank you. <laughs> God damn it. I thought I could get them with two views in. What's, what's making an impact for you then, Connor? I don't know, you know, I, I've had this, um, I watched this video a while back about, uh, it was a down the rabbit hole video. I went back mm. uh, through Fred's library and rewatched it occasionally, mainly uh -huh. to fall asleep too, because Fred, Fred's voice is great. He does have a soothing too. voice. Because it's just, mono, it's it's not, mono, well, it's very, you do, he doesn't shout. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was this video about this, um, I can't remember for the life of me what his name was. Um, he was like, uh, I, I, I don't know. This guy had a few mental problems, but and he was struggling with a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think he was in some war at some point. Mm. So he was very, uh, he didn't have a lot of money and he kind of like, went through trash and, and grabbed any kind of art supply he could. He would use like scrap or like literal trash to right. make art. Mm -hmm. And he never shared any of it for, with anyone for uh -huh. like decades. And uh, when he died, they uh, went into his apartment and the landlord just found all this stuff. Right. And I guess, you know, rather than throwing it away, he just was like, what the fuck is all this? And decided to share it. And it's like, oh, this guy had built a whole world and this insane series of books that are so weird and so strange. Um, and so like kind of foreign, uh. but he'd made this entire complex world that he never shared with anyone. Mm. Uh, and it made me think it was like, okay, in this day and age, I feel like we don't have any creativity or well, not a lot of creativity that is pure creation. Mm. It is it is just the, 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 me, the ends of, to meet the, the, you know, the means of mm. making it. You know, and it's so rare that you meet someone who just makes, just to make. Yeah. There's no, there's no reason. There's no purpose. It's just passion to make in the creation process. Well, that's the that's the idea of like the true artist, right? Right, the right. We're obsessed with that. Just makes yeah. it because they want to make it. Because it's it. so hard to feel like if somebody is super famous. Yeah. Um, that's why I feel like we idolize <laughs> artists that are past because we're like we can't see them say stupid shit about their opinions on politics or whatever. Yeah. We kind of idolize these figures who have gone because we can look back and be like, look, they became famous after they died. And I yeah. feel like this is why this happened with art, yeah. specifically like a like kind of traditional art. Oh, totally. Because we want to, we're obsessed with this idea of the the artist who makes art for the sole point of creating, not well, for any well, a game. A lot of like the most like famous artists in the world yeah. died completely broke. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, I feel that like in this day and age, uh, it's like, it, it makes me question my own, my own like reasons for making what I make. And I'm like, man, I wish I had the integrity to just make for make. But if, mm. if I wasn't getting paid, I don't think I'd be doing this still. Right. But it might look, if, it might look if, different. If, if you were getting, okay, here's hypothetical question. If you could make the videos or the <clears throat> art that you're making and get paid, but no one would see it, would you still do it? I think so. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I wonder how much of the, the feedback is important to my my process. I probably wouldn't because I think feedback is just something that whether it's, you know, wanted or not, I think it's just like a yeah, part this is, this of our- like a, this It's is, interesting you say that as the Twitch streamer who gets like the instant feedback. Yeah. To but I, I almost would do. like, like some of the, sometimes I stream though and I just literally play the game and I ignore the chat for like yeah. 12 hours. Yeah. And I'm like, I would have done this regardless of if there was one viewer or 10,000, I would have played Well, this. I mean, when it comes to like just playing a game, for instance, like yeah. that's easy enough, but say like, you know- A show? Yeah, like yeah, a show. Well, I mean, those shows are designed around the feedback. So I feel like yeah. that's a bit different, but like- well, you know, what, what if it was like a show that say, for example, some like, say you had like a fucking, you know, oil daddy who was just like, I want you to make this specific video I would just for me. If the pay was good, I'd do it. Back really? in the day, back in the day, I would have, yeah. Would you do it now? No. 
I make good money now. <laughs> I don't need it. But back in the day, bro, if you came to me as a student, you're like, this guy wants you to make a fucking 20 minute video of Sebastian, uh, like ASMRing yeah. about someone called Steve. Yeah. I'd have done it. If they oh, no. give me like, if they give me like two bands, I'd have done it. No, of course it's, I, done it's, it. I, was, it's, I was broke. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, more about, it's more about the question of, would you create if you would never be able to see anyone's I, reaction to it and your own, you do it for your own kind of like satisfaction. I think so. Cause I think the urge to create came very strongly when I kind of got to my uh, teen, like very late teens. And I realized I'd kind of suppressed that entire side of my personality. Mm. Cause yeah. I thought, cause I deemed it as like uh, not valuable. Mm. Yeah. Like cause I think this happens to a lot of people, especially in the sciences or engineering. Yeah. We kind of see creativity as a burden. We're like, this is, I don't need this. This doesn't help the science that I'm trying right, to progress. Right, right. Like, but oddly enough in engineering, creativity is almost lacking and we need more of it. Mm. Um, I think creativity is, is a great way to make Wait, sure- why'd you say that? We need creative solutions to any problem. A lot of why, like- Why do you think it's lacking then? Because I think that a lot of people go into the sciences and, and kind of train themselves out of being creative in a sense. They're like, I have to follow the strict guidelines of engineering. Because you know, we're, so, we're always taught within the sciences, this is how you solve this question. I think I think engineers are, the, are some of the most creative people on the planet. No, I think- They are the, like, they are the most creative people on the planet because they can, they, they know how to problem. create the laziest way to solve a solution. No, and I, I agree and with- that, that, that is mm. like, to me, that is fucking true creativity. But I, I agree. But yeah. I think when we're looking at stuff like that, we are often looking at people who are, who are like almost pioneers or who are very good at what they do. I think <laughs> yeah. the average engineer just turns up to work and they do what they need to do, right, you know? Cause right. we're, mm -hmm. a lot of companies don't want someone who is uh, super creative a lot of the time, like do what we tell you to do and do it. Mm. Like, I feel like a lot of engineering nowadays, at least the way it's taught, I don't know if it's fed. I mean, again, I haven't worked in engineering. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but at least the what way it was taught. What was your third year project? Uh, I did, uh, I think I told about this. I did this horrible, uh, wave energy renewable project that didn't work at oh, all. Oh, the water one? Yeah, yeah the water yeah. one. It was the wave absorption tool that it yeah. didn't work. Yeah. But would you say that like didn't try to kind of, I guess- No, because I, I, I was just copying I was just copying previous ideas. Because <laughs> someone else had come up with this idea and it failed. And for some reason, I thought it was good enough to work. <laughs> so you just plagiarized the idea? <laughs> that sounds like but a you. Like, but that's like saying, no, no, as in the idea that I come up with, yeah. like, wait, like doing wave energy wasn't a new idea, but right, the, I, yeah. the, the design I came up with was new, yeah. but it was new and shit. Yeah, right. but th that's still like- Yeah, but you, so, still, you still used your creativity so, come yeah, up with see, something new. That's, that's the thing, you, you, you had a problem I, you I need to like solve. Creativity is a fair, if you just saw it, you'd, you'd say creativity <laughs> I didn't say there was good creativity. No, no, but I, 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 meant there. Was, I meant there is creativity I, there. I think that if engineers were kind of, I think I, I felt like it was never encouraged to, to learn or be more expressive or more creative. And I think if I, had done more creative stuff on the side for whatever reason, mm. I could have better used the, that creativity and the way I think about creativity in my engineering degree in some ways to solve mm. problems more efficiently. Yeah. Because you, you never, we all think we have the best way of doing everything until somebody decides that they figured out a better way or yeah. figured it out, I, right? I feel like the creativity I, I had in my, my engineering yeah. uh, course is very similar to, it's 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 a similar feeling and a and a similar kind of creativity to what I apply to my YouTube videos, right? Mm. A lot a lot of it, a, a lot of satisfaction I get is figuring out something new, for example. Yeah, solving a problem. So solving a problem, mm. right? Whether that be figuring out a new video that would work for the YouTube algorithm, I, I get mm. a lot of satisfaction with that. And to me, that's the case, same kind of satisfaction as figuring out a engineering solution to a problem in my own way. Cause mm. like I figured that out, this is my solution. And, and I guess that there was, that definitely did happen towards the end of the, yeah. the course, but I'd already had what, like six, seven years of formal experience where I wasn't allowed to create anything. It right. was all about problem solving mm. and the problems have already been pre-solved and they were just asking me to solve it in the exact same way that they already came up with. Mm. So what I'm getting at is that like, yes, it was great that they gave us that opportunity to do yeah. it a few times, but I, I can count on my my one hand how many times I was given the full creativity to solve a problem. Yeah. But most of the time in engineering and STEM subjects, it was all about solve it in the way we expect you to solve it and answer it in the way we expect you to answer it. Mm. Yeah. Which I feel like doesn't harbor creativity. It doesn't allow you to to grow and and kind of um uh, you know, kind of what's the word? 
uh, kind of develop your creativity skills, which mm. I felt like I was lacking because I thought that that's not what engineers do and that's not what science people do because I felt like that's the way I've been taught. Mm, right. I don't know. I don't know if you ever felt that way at all in class, but that's how it felt for I me. I mean, I, f I feel like- I don't know if I'm- I, 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 I feel like Bristol, Bristol University did, at least when I did the course, yeah. it was the first two years was, okay, theory, 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 problem yeah, the solving, problem solving. Shit. And then the third year, it, I, th I think it was a really good project actually. There was, uh, we had this uh, project called, uh, it was like the buggy project mm. where you had, you had a kind of like a structure for a buggy and the buggy had to basically traverse a maze, oh, uh, a maze this, and yeah. do different kinds of thing. And it was up to you and your team how to decide the best way for the buggy to hit all these certain specifications. Yeah, that sounds like and a good I was idea. like, that, yeah. that was that, that to me was like, oh, okay, this is the first time I'm applying my knowledge to solve a solution. There is not one solution to this problem. Mm. And it's up to it, you know, it, it's up to your team to figure out the best way for them to solve the solution. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you, that's where you kind of push innovation, where you, you set, you set a start point, you set a goal and you're like, how do you get to this goal? You can, you can figure it out yourself. And you see, I mean, the only big project I had was make a wind turbine. You all get a part each, but some people were given a lot easier parts than others. I, I had to make a <coughs> shaft. You know how easy it is to make a shaft? Very, it's not that hard. Whereas <laughs> the guy and the other guy in my group had the gearbox. That's fucked. The I gear know, gears it's, it's are a fucked. To a non-engineer, they both sound hard. Yeah. No, the <laughs> shaft is is like a bunch of cylinders stacked on each other. It wasn't right. that tough. The guy who had the aerofoils, the 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 wing, like the wings, if you will. Yeah. When when we got to make those, he was like, uh, the the professor was like, oh yeah, don't worry, you because you're idiots. There's no way you could design an aerofoil because this is like yeah. this is very complicated aerodynamics. Yeah. You just go online and and pick the aerofoil, the one that's mm. already made, because. You, Making an aerofoil as a 20 year old student is very challenging. Yeah. Uh, so he just fucking took it online and then just fucking put it in CAD. Right. And it, he, his job was done. I, I, I made a cylinder and fucking stacked it and chose the material and I was done. And then this guy's making a gearbox. And I'm like, there's a <laughs> bit of a difference in. Uh, obviously, there was more to it than that. Yeah. But generally, I felt like the guy with the gearbox was on suicide watch. And I just had to go. <laughs> you were that guy in the group project. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't even that. Like uh, I think at that point it was. We we were predetermined what our tasks were based on some criteria. Yeah. So I must have been like the the guy with the helmet on too tight or something because they made me do that one. Yeah. I don't know. Like that. <laughs> the guy with the gearbox was a genius. Uh, yeah, he was. He was really good at it. Uh, yeah. I remember he did a great job, and I, I even my <laughs> shaft was not very good because I, I just didn't take it seriously because I was like, it's a fucking shaft. What do you want me to do? <laughs> wow. <laughs> how did you fuck it up? <laughs> Dunno. Yeah, you I mean, realize, from, from you how you described it, it sounded very simple. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, yeah, well, but you I fucked it up, it was <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, cause I yeah. chose squares instead of <laughs> circles. Cause when you make something, right? You're yeah. like, uh, you're like- make Wait, when you say make, you have to like physically make it? No, 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 in or CAD. Just, oh, in CAD, right. So then you're like, all right, cool. And then you, you get a cylinder and you're like taper and you just go whoop. Yeah. You've made a cylinder. And then you submit it and the guy goes, oh, no, no, no. How the fuck are you gonna transport a, an 80 meter tall cylinder? That's impossible. You need to split it into parts. All right. Okay, so you're like, okay, shit. All right, well, that's cut, cut, cut. He's like, well, how are you gonna join it? And you're like, okay, well, shit. Okay, I gotta, all right, I guess I gotta You're the one that told me to cut it apart. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, cause you have to cut it to transport it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, and then you, you do this. And he's like, no, 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 that's not reasonable. You can't manufacture that. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, all right. He's like, think of another way to make it that, that makes it easier to manufacture. Because right. otherwise this is gonna cost an arm and a leg. If you're, um, when you manufacture anything, there's, there's a thing called like tolerances and stuff like yeah. that as well, where like how shit of a job can they do basically? Right. And you have to account for that. Yeah. And if you if you're like, it has to be perfect. It makes the costs crazy. So you basically have to design, you start like, you have this really simple cylinder. You're like, boom. And then you're like, okay, wait, now we're in the real world and you start cutting back. And it's actually a great way to kind well, of make you think more about- To me, that's like creative problem solving because you're it like, is. cylinder, boom, here's a shaft, yeah. but let's apply real world problems to it. And that's, that's to me is the beauty of engineering, which is like, you have this idea yeah, and how do you yeah. realize it in the current status of the real world? Yeah, and, and I guess possible? that was fun, but I guess in, 
like learning, I think that's a great message from the send, but I guess for me personally, because I was so checked out of engineering as well. Yeah. It was like, I wish there was something a little more hands-on. I'm gonna say engineer, engineers are the fucking goats. No, they are, yeah. absolutely. No, they absolutely. are. And it, there are so many engineers in so many places that started off doing engineering and have just gone and done way different fucking yeah. career paths. I oh, know for sure. For and sure. I will say some of the skills I learned in my engineering course, I'm applying to YouTube. And I know the, that- The problem solving that you learned from engineering, yeah. I think is irreplaceable. Like it's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I just wish that we had a buggy or something because that's way cooler. <laughs> like I think if I had a physical thing that I could feel and interact with, it would be way cooler to kind yeah, of- I'm, I'm having this conversation use. and now I'm just like, man. You want to make something? My kid should do engineering. <laughs> you be that dad. It, it's me. I, now that it's I think about it, I fucking hated engineering, well, but I'm just like through this conversation, I'm just realizing how valuable engineering skills. It's can the be modern applied. day Uno reverse to Asian parents. So yeah. Like lawyer or doctor? <laughs> may I suggest engineer? They're like, oh. See, I, can't, I, I can't say the same thing. Like I can't go up to my kid and go, "You got to do web to site design and music and well, quantum I, physics." I, I chose. I mean, I don't know why you chose engineering, but I chose engineering out of kind of like, it was like, well, nothing else fits with what I like. Yeah. And also man. it kind of turned out that engineering happened to be, and I think generally is from a lot of uh, kind of, uh, kind of when they've collected a lot of information about it, engineering tends to be the best return on investment degree. Right. Like if you, the amount of money you put in, you generally get the average higher salary. Mm. Also, I liked that I, I saw like what you can get with an engineering degree. And you know, you, you, you do a doctor degree. Yeah. That's like very limiting on your options. You do yeah. like a- Oh, you're engineering, you can fucking do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw like, oh, you do an engineering degree and you can just do this many jobs afterwards. I was yeah. like, great, it's, I don't have a, to make my decision now. So I'm gonna do engineering. I mean, this whole podcast has just <clears throat> been selling engineering. Yeah. And then, the, the amount of and, cred I've got from just saying I have an engineering degree and I've, I, if you ask me to do any fucking basic engineering, I can't yeah. do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I get so much people being like, whoa, you must be spot. I'm like, nope, actually quite the opposite. <laughs> That's why I'm not and, doing an engineering yeah. job. And, and I guess I proved myself right because I didn't think I'd be doing fucking YouTube with an engineering degree, but I am. And I, I, I think we apply a lot of things. Hey, we're we like learn. the greats, yeah. Markiplier, Felix. <laughs> yeah. We <get> engineering degrees. <laughs> Must be nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> you actually can't be a good YouTuber if you don't have an engineering yeah. degree. Is that why my channel's dying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, I think that, um, yeah, I think it's a, a great degree, Yeah. but I kind of wish that for me personally, it, there was more opportunities to be creative. Yeah. But you know, it's just, again, I think every- every. I think that's more to do with the, the university of teaching and, yeah. and uh, what mm. university you yeah. I mean, the fact that I'd literally won, there was one module where the teacher just gave us the answers the day before the exam. I was like, what the fuck is, I, that was in the moment I was like, what the fuck is this degree? All right. The guy just came in and was like, guys, I'm gonna give you a lecture. You are gonna want to study it hard. Mm. And he's like, question one, this may come up on the test. He said that every single time. Right. And it literally came up in order of his presentation. <laughs> literally the exact same question with the numbers different. He probably looked at the class Bro, and he was, like, right, he was getting some bad results. That means he, he needed to bump up those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> he, yes, found, I, I, he found a cheat way to I, do it, man. I, yeah, I am curious because the, the previous professor apparently was very like gleeful with the fact that uh, his subject has the lowest pass rates. Mm. But maybe the university, I don't know how it works. Maybe he, they took that as, hey, you're doing a you're bad teaching job. bad. Yeah. Why are they all fucking failing? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe the next guy was like, I have a genius solution to fixing the failing problem. I will give them give the, them the answers. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not, you're not, you're not, I mean, you're not giving them the answers, yeah. but suddenly everyone's gone up by yeah. 20%. You're teaching them stuff that might turn up. Yeah. <laughs> might yeah, as in weird. 99% will turn up. What's, what's the proudest thing you did or made in university, Joey? <sighs> Fucking nothing, dude. Nothing, bro. I, wait, like, I, do you have bro. anything good to share for university? Um, Actually, I do. You guys just saw it. Oh, <laughs> it the fucking website. You made that website? I, I made that website in high school, but then I perfected it. Wait, isn't it university. with WordPress? Yeah, but I did all the hard coding. What? I, I hard coded that website. <laughs> Even though WordPress lets you like soft code yeah, and just like yeah. place shit, yeah. I, I hard coded that website. Yeah, I mean coding- And look at it. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. But yeah, did I mean, you choose the banners? I did choose the banners, yeah. <laughs> I just, I think I remember how I chose these banners. I yeah. typed in anime and then the dimensions and then I just picked the first one. Fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, coding is just Lego with words. It is, it is. Um, I don't know, what's the proudest thing I made? Uh, in my last year, we, I made a, we had this like robotic arm that we had at the university and we had to make a program that could make the robotic arm do different stuff. And so my group made a, uh, an, a custom, uh, it was a cocktail making robot. 
So basically, the oh, robot that awesome. the robot had an arm, right? Well, what the fuck? I'm here sitting here cardboard and LEDs. And you're, <laughs> no, 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 no. But but fuck university. No, no, no. no but, but but here's the thing: it didn't fucking work. <laughs> Well, you had a robot but arm. You had, you had a robot we arm. We had a robot arm on campus. Just imagine if it did work. Yeah, if it worked, it would have been- memory shit, high, It would have been core cool memory, memory as fuck. Well, I remember I asked for But like the a, only uh, thing he could do was pour a beer. How is that, a, how is that an L? a win. Yeah. No, no, because <laughs> no, because we we literally like it was it was a mixture between like it was like we had like two guys who were like in you know who were majoring in programming and then yeah. I was majoring in like UX design. So yeah. basically, I had to make the UX for this app where like if you press if you it, it was the scenario of you went up to a bar and there's a robot on there. Yeah. You had to you had to make an app uh, and like create it so that like if you came up to the thing and you'd press a couple of buttons being like, I want to make, been... you know, this with this strength and blah, blah, blah. You and then you press it. in the Zuckerberg of Jack and all. Yeah. <laughs> I could have, but then, and then, you know, you type in like, okay, I want a gin and tonic. Uh, give me a double shot uh, in, with no ice or yes ice. And you press all of these and then it would send the program to the robot and the robot would grab I, each of the I, bottles I, bro, and make you it You just experienced you. life. That this is yeah. this is professional projects in a nutshell. Person A has an idea. He gets the budgets, and, he, and then you realize you have to scale down on what your original specifications were yeah. meant to be. And then you get the final project. Uh, you get the final product, and I was like, and you're like, well, this isn't what I envisioned. But I, it can I, still I, pour a beer. I, yeah, I, I, I get that it's like a cool proof of concept. But if I went to a yeah. bar, my bartender was a robot. I think I'd just become sober. Uh, yeah, right. I, I just don't like for me. The bartender is part of the drinking uh, totally, experience. Totally, totally. The yeah. guy maybe- It depends on the bar. You go to Weatherspoons and sometimes you're like, oh. I've waited 15 <laughs> fucking minutes to get a drink. Please just have but, a fucking robot dispense no, my drink, no, please. But, no, it's part, of the, it's part of the personality. It's part of the flavor of the drink. Waiting 20 minutes is not part of the personality. It, it might that be is... cool the first couple of times you experience it being like, oh, the fucking robot made this drink for me. But then after a while you're just like- There is there is a gap man. for it is what no, I'm saying. I, I, there I, there I, are some no, places where you just no. need to get a drink <laughs> as fast as as fast and efficiently as possible. And weather spoons no. on a fucking Saturday night is one I, of those I days. I still want my pipe poured by a 50 year old man who has slightly racist beliefs and loves football too much. He just, <laughs> make, he just does it right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this, is, this is like city boy versus country boy. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, I want, the, I want the core of bodies. <laughs> I just need, I've, I've waited too many, been to you're, too many you're, bars. You're misunderstanding the whole point of alcohol, Gant, which is socializing. I want to socialize with my friends. No, no, no. even you even know. having that slight <laughs> awkward interaction with the bartender, or maybe you have a great connection with the bartender. Yeah. Some, some it's bars, all part of the bar. Okay, if it's like an intimate bar, yes, I agree. Then no, even when it's a cool. busy bar, I love getting Fuck the guys' attention. No, I've, I'll have uh, no, I don't, don't, don't ever do that. By the way, don't ever <laughs> <shoot that>. uh, <laughs> I want to <Gus> <laughs> don't ever do that. You will literally get killed in the British pub. I yeah. think you would actually get thrown out. Yeah, in the British pub. I think he actually because your interaction boils down to what you want. You want fucking ten Jaeger bombs, and then you take no, half, but even you know, see, and then you take half an hour of everyone I, else's time. I need, oh. I need that that man of like. I I've been on that. the other side of that, and I no. want to kill myself. Yeah. But I, 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 that's what I seek. I need to when I do a ridiculous order. I want the person to reflect that with. Nah. You know? nah. No, nah. I, that makes me feel nah, bad. Bro, nah. No, no, that's part of the experience. I nah, want to, bro. I want to just cold bloodedly press ten Jaeger bombs on a fucking yes. app, and oh, the robot yeah. just does. When it. I order like fifteen drinks, I don't want someone to go. No problem. I want someone to go. Oh, fifteen drinks. Okay, well, look, 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 Connor. I, I need to be affirmed that this is an insane amount of drinks, <laughs> and that me and my boys are going hard tonight. Connor, I, when I go to Weatherspoons, I'm not looking for fucking ambiance or a fucking connection I am. with the bar. You don't understand that the, the, the Weatherspoons, getting, the bald man in the bar is no, bringing you ambiance. I am getting. I am going there for the specific reason to get drunk what as next? fast as I can, as cheap as I what can. What next? You want all the people in the bar to replace your robots because they're not they're not interacting? Uh, they talk to you loudly or something? You I want, mean, Japan's no. already there. <laughs> Some places. I'm gonna go with this. <laughs> you guys can keep talking. But yeah, no, I agree. So how oh, how far did you get with it? So you, you poured a beer. So I and lit you weren't proud of that shit. No, because everybody else has worked perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and our team, like, I, and it was so annoying as well because, like, like I'm not gonna blame the programmers mm -hmm. because I was just on the UX and UI side of things, right? Like, yeah. I made a bomb ass UI. Like, I like I made fucking Atlas proud with my UI, <laughs> right? Like, it was it was a bomb ass UI. Right. Looked great, functioned perfectly, and then 
something on the day. We tested it for like weeks. We fucking debugged that shit for weeks before the day. And we were like, all right, seems to work. It's great. On the day we had to present it. The robot was just like, nah, bro. <laughs> bro, you had a fucking Cyberpunk 2077. No, legit. Like I, I would be like, watch watch this robot make a gin and tonic double shot. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Why is it not doing anything? <laughs> also, this is the most Aussie fucking idea I've ever heard in my life. You have, you have a fucking robot arm that can do anything. No, and, and he no, and he was the he was the cruelest thing because yeah. it was the final project for our final year. Mm -hmm. They decided, hey, you know what would be the best place to showcase all of these projects for yeah. this robotic arm? Yeah. At the final day before graduation, when everybody is partying in the campus. Right. So not only was it like our curricula or, or, or like our uh, uh, our faculty that was partying, you know, with this like robot that can serve alcohol. Yeah. But it was also the rest of the entire university that came to like check out this robot. And then I have to fucking stand there and be like, yeah, so my robot uh, can only pour a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that sounds fucking amazing. It was <laughs> I hated it. I, I left early, I'm pretty sure. Cause I'm like, this is too much of a shame to show to people. Cause like all these other ones were like fucking shaking no, the thing no. and everything like that. And I'm just like- Mine can pour First a all, beer. Your university is way too rich if they have that many robot arms. Well, Second Sydney University, bro. Okay. All right. We had that money. Uh, I mean, okay. I saw what Sydney said at the other restaurant. I don't know if she should be running a university. <laughs> um, yeah, I turned up to my graduation in a university and I I bought the suit at Primark the day before. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize like I needed like a tie or anything. So I just kind yeah. of rocked up in like a blazer and a shirt. Wait, you and guys wore suits to your graduation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we borrow like the garbs and the hat. Uh, we don't do that. Oh, we, no. uh, at least not in my universities. Oh. And uh, I remember I was like the least dressed person. My parents were so embarrassed. Yeah. They were like, why is Connor? He doesn't even have a fucking tie. What is he doing? <laughs> what the fuck? Look, motherfucker looking like, like a waiter. I gave me my degree. I was like, fucking cheers, mate. <laughs> See you later. Motherfucker looking like a waiter at Olive Garden. Basically, yeah. I literally looked like a waiter. Like, I turned out, I was like, oh, thanks, man. Thanks for the degree. Um, yeah, I, it's yeah I, I got to do like the hat throwing thing. Oh, we didn't do that. Oh, we didn't do that. That was great. We don't we don't subscribe to this American propaganda. All right. Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. That, not. You know what? That was a core cool memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> the hat throwing. I was like, I've seen this in so many movies. This is very. I, wish I, I don't know if you felt this way, but I felt this very morbid kind of um, this kind of morbidness at mm. the end of your graduation ceremony, where you kind of have you talk to everyone afterwards, and you kind of like. I'm not gonna see half you fuck, well, more than half, like I'm not gonna see 95% of you people ever again. Yeah. And some and of you were so- you never did. And some of you were so, you know, uh, influential at one point or another in my life. Yeah. And I'm never gonna see you guys again. I yeah. think right now I only like regularly hang out with maybe three of my mates from university. I don't hang out with any. Yeah, really? I realized it, yeah. it was it was like two for a while. And as I've Actually, not no, gone like back two. to the, I've not gone back to the UK for a while, yeah. it's kind of become zero. Yeah. Cause I don't, I didn't, you know, I'm not the kind of person I don't really like small talk texting. I think mm. it's kind of just not. Oh fun. no, I don't small talk text my uni friends. Well, but like, I reckon if I hit them up and I went back, it'd be a great time. Oh yeah, yeah. No, every time I go back to Australia, like I, there's like one or two people I always hang out with. One of my uni mates who, when I last saw him, he was gonna, he was gonna take over his girlfriend's company. Mm. And then three years later he messages me and he's like one of the like, biggest shareholders on one of the biggest esports companies oh, shit. in the UK. Oh shit. And he's like giving me ad deals and stuff. <laughs> and we met up in LA. It was so surreal. That's badass. So I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Like how did this happen? <laughs> but he's always cool. It's like you didn't even like games growing up. Yeah. <laughs> no, he loved games and he loved esports. But right. I remember that like he was like, yeah, I'm gonna go take over my girlfriend's company. All right. And then he uh yeah went on to not do that. And I saw him three years later in fucking LA. Yeah. And he's like the head of this this fucking company. And I'm Hell like, what yeah. the fuck happened? The how did you do that that fast? <laughs> This is very impressive. Have you, do you have you ever gone down your like Facebook feed just to see what anyone who like in your high school or shit was doing? Everyone's doing like really normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. they're either all married or they're all with kids or yeah. they just have like kind a normal job. Kind of wish someone became like a Willy Wonka or something. So I kind yeah. of have some the, like- The craziest yeah. one for me is one of my high school friends. Uh, actually, I've known him since primary school, Japanese guy, uh, became the youngest wine sommelier in history. Oh, he keeps oh, telling me about this dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah Toro Takamatsu. He was, uh, which is really weird because he never drank. 
Yeah. Oh. Like up until we graduated, like he wasn't- Refining really, the tongue. Yeah, Not he, allowing yeah, it to be spoiled I guess. or yeah. sullied by poor because, alcohol. Like, it, because he was like really, really into coffee uh, during high school. Huh. Like he was, huh. and everybody thought he was going to go down like the barista line, yeah. right? And then like a couple of years later, like after we hadn't seen each other for a while because we were all adults. Yeah. Yeah. I just like saw him in the newspaper and it was like, oh, Toru Takamatsu, the youngest wine sommelier in history. And wow. I was like, what the fuck? When did this happen? I thought you were a coffee guy. Yeah, it's, it's weird. To, it's interesting to see. <clears throat> it's, to me, it's like interesting to see what different life paths people have taken sometimes. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. I kind of, but then I also sometimes get, I don't know, I don't know. So sometimes I kind of, especially when I speak to some of my friends that had such lofty ambitions and then you kind of see them not, doing what they said they wanted to do. Mm. Kind of get sad because I'm like, man, yeah. you have such fucking cool ideas and yeah. you really wanted to, yeah. to do this crazy thing and you ended up not doing that. For sure. Yeah. Um, and it's always kind of, I don't know, it's frustrating. Oh, you're like, on, man, you're so, you're so fucking yeah. talented. On the flip side, it's interesting to see people who are just seem like an absolute fucking mess. And they figured it in out. In high school, yeah. like <laughs> fucking this figure me. it out. Me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Would, okay, question. Would you go to your high school reunion? If you were asked, I don't know if you were. I, I were missed you? my high school. Reunion. I missed mine as Wait, well. Wait, when was it? Last year. Actually, Wait. no, year before. Mine Wait, was what, what was what like 2020, anniversary? Was 2022, that? 10 year anniversary. Oh shit. Yeah, I missed yeah. mine two years ago. Would that, be like, was... would that be like mine next year? When did you graduate? I don't fucking no. How old am I? I'm 27, Joe. You're 27. So yeah, next yeah. year would be for you. Shit, let's find out. 2015. Would you, would you go to your- but Lined up with a schedule. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to the I UK mean, for it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, the only, the only reason I wouldn't is because yeah. I didn't, sorry, is because it didn't line up uh, and I wasn't in the UK. I'd really like to go see a bunch of my old screw friends. That'd yeah. be fun. I couldn't do it because of COVID. Oh shit. Yeah, Wait, do they it, still have it? Well, no, it was it well, it was the tail oh, end of COVID, right? right 2022. Right, right. So yeah. I couldn't, I, it was still like, I couldn't go to Australia. Would you have gone there if uh, COVID wasn't the thing? I would have. Yeah, yeah I think it'd because, be fun, it'd be yeah, fun. Yeah, because like I, I heard about it from a couple of my mates and like the turnout, because we had such a small year, like there was only like 40, 50 people in our year. Mm. Yeah. So, and most of them still lived in Sydney. So like it was surprising, like I think it was like 80% of the year like actually showed up, uh, which is interesting because like, the throughout our high school, like we all had our own cliques and we weren't necessarily like hanging out with one another all the time. Like it was always just se segregated into different friend groups. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, my, my, my friend was telling me about it and he was like, yeah, it was really crazy just seeing that everybody was still just interacting with one another like it was still high school and it was kind of bizarre. I would like to go to my high school reunion. Yeah, I would have really liked to. If we're doing like a 20th year anniversary, I would definitely- I would go. like to go to my university reunion as well. If, if there was like- That'd a be cool. Like, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Classes are so big though. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. The problem. Yeah. But- just, you know, just message all your mates independently being like, I've summoned you. All of us come to Japan. Let's hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys come to me. <laughs> Not yeah, the other way around. Yeah. You guys. Yeah. What the fuck? I mean, yeah, I'm the only one here, but come on. Did I tell you did I tell you that I met like the guy who uh sold drugs in my in my <laughs> like, Do you tell? Yeah, I, I I met I met the guy randomly in the UK. Uh, and I remember back when I was a teenager, mm. he was known as the guy who had all of the drugs. There was always one. Right, there was always <laughs> there was always that one guy. Not yeah. that I like really, he wasn't a friend. He was just like- Man, you gotta get was, Modern Warfare 2 somehow. Yeah, yeah. He was just the guy that I knew. Everyone knew in the school year. Yeah. Randomly met him. Uh, I just like randomly met him a few years ago uh, on a night out in Bristol. And I was like, oh shit, what are you up to now? He was like, at the time, it was like selling Pokemon cards. Oh yeah, you. I remember you told me about. Yeah, he was, he was. Yeah, like, yeah. He's this new yeah, grift, right? Yeah, yeah. He, I, I mean, I think that's just the spirit of a hustler. It right. Does, it doesn't matter what makes money. Yeah. He's just gonna hustle whatever. What makes is just the most, very illegal. <laughs> whatever, whatever <laughs> makes the most money at the time, whether it's legal or not. See, I, I just, have a, I have a story of a friend from high school who was that, but ended up being the opposite. So he mm. was like, he wasn't necessarily like the drug dealer guy, but yeah. he did a lot of drugs. Right, yeah. and he was like overall like pretty like well like badly behaved during yeah. high school, yeah. right? Like always got into trouble with all kind of stuff. Ended up being a lawyer. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> well, he would know the a law lot, like, best. A, a lot of people How the fuck did that happen? A lot of people, you know, I think there's an argument to made where you just kinda get it out of your system. Yeah. You're yeah. like, I'm gonna do all the crazy shit while I'm yeah. yeah. I get away with it. I mean, I'd say it's maybe Sometimes. a 50 50 Some, chance. It's, <laughs> such a point yeah, no. well, it's up to it's up to the person. It, it, it was it was yeah. destiny, dare I say. <laughs> it was well, then, I think some people experience that kind of stuff and they're like, I'm good. Like I don't need this. Like I, I have no interest in sure. this. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, I had a Maybe like four, right? Maybe 
actually it was the right before I moved to Japan. Mm-hmm. Had a night out and um, one of like, uh, I never got in a fight with him or anything, but he was a kind of a bully mm. and I went out with him. And this was like three or four years after high school had ended at this point. Cause it was, um, it was after university mm. basically. So I think, yeah, three or four years. And uh, I was kind of like, all right, awesome. Maybe he's like, maybe he's like cool now. And I uh, met up with him and he was like, yeah, he was super fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as we kept drinking, <laughs> It slowly came back more, like the kind of dick bully that he was. Yeah. Like he started doing shit that was just like a dick. Like he was just making fun of people, like pushing people around a little bit. And I was yeah. like, oh, you just got good at hiding. Yeah. <laughs> you just learned how to hide being a d- <laughs> Like you are you are deep down still a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was really interesting. Cause I, I really genuinely, I was like, oh, this guy's pretty fucking Well, it's also man. probably because hanging out with you Maybe brought, brought back, back those memories, yeah. right? Yeah, because like, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said that, you know, if when I hung out, cause you know, when I went back to Australia last Christmas, I hung out, I got to hang out with my high school mates cause we're still quite close. And we hadn't gathered all together in that friend group in fuck, like almost 10 years now. Yeah. Um, and it was surprising. Like I was, kind of, I was a little bit nervous because I didn't know if that amount of time passing would change the dynamic of like how we interact with one another. Yeah. I don't know why I worried because the moment we all got to that pub and we were just like hanging out, playing mm. pool, and doing whatever, I felt like I was back in high school. And I was yeah, like, yeah. like you know, like at first there was that kind of like slight awkwardness of like, oh shit, I haven't seen you in like five years, yeah. 10 years, yeah. whatever. But then the moment we all kind of got comfortable with each other again, it was, it literally like, I I had flashbacks of high school. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's so weird how it's like that. Yeah. Because um, it just, it just happens. Like that side of you, you haven't brought out in all that time. Just suddenly when all the pieces are fit together, they just click and it's out before you know it. Like my Australian accent tripled <laughs> during that night. Oh bro, it's, every time I go back to England, my- <clears throat> But it depends. It, I think it depends on who I talk to. But yeah. sometimes my accent just like flips back to mm-hmm. good old 2007 anime zone. Oh yeah, sometimes. totally, totally. Yeah. But hey, we uh, talk too much uh, because oh, shit, I was just having a good time. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I could go for another like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, alas, you guys are gonna have to wait for the next drunk episode, whenever that might be. But uh, hey, look at all these patrons, though. Yeah. Let us know look at, of look your- at, look at Cheers patrons. to you, patrons. Yeah, cheers. cheers. If you've been drinking along I've, with I've us this episode- I've run out of beer and I've gone to non alcoholic beer now. Oh no. <laughs> if you've been drinking along with us this episode, then good on you. If you're too young for that, then don't watch this episode until you're of age. But hey, yeah. if you enjoyed this episode, then, and if you want to f- support us, sorry, I'm slurring a bit, then make sure <laughs> to go over to patreon.com slash trash I've never seen Joey struggle so yeah. much to do this outro before. I, uh, for a split second, I forgot how to do the outro. <laughs> Hey, if you'd like to support the show, then head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash days. Also follow us on Twitter, send us some memes on the subreddit. And if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. And uh, cheers to also, you guys. Also, there is another, also there is a Patreon video that is yes. coming out this week. Play the clip, Moon on. week. If you don't live off instant noodles in uni, then you are doing life wrong. Is this gone? This is me, this is me. <laughs> this, is, this is me. I think I'm in uni at this period though. Okay, I think it's Connor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's go. No. Wasn't that amazing? Oh my god, it I was loved, so amazing. I loved that thing you I did. I came. We'll see you guys <laughs> in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.